The views expressed by our guests on this broadcast or live chat do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the Bible Big Mouth or Unapologetic Rob. The objective of this program is to allow you, the caller, and our guests to share their individual thoughts, views, and opinions. Hey, our job is to moderate, moderate, moderate. Show everybody. Come on in, come on in. Sit yourself down. Get yourself some popcorn. Jesus versus Santa Claus. The fight for Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Yes, sir. Hi, everybody. DJ, cut the music. Cut the music, DJ. All right, all right. I got. I gotta say something. I gotta say something. Hang on, hang on. I gotta say something. No, no. Cut the music. Cut the music. Cut the music. Cut the music. No music. No music. I gotta. I gotta apologize, people. I am very, very sorry. I am not Joe Rogan. I'm sorry. If you tuned in, looking and hoping to see Joe Rogan, that ain't me. I am an unapologetic Rob, and this is the show. Thanks for tuning in. We have a good show tonight. Uh, first of all, I got a list of here of people I want to do some shout outs. First of all, I know he's watching. I spoke to him earlier. I want to shout young Zachary. Young Zachary. Yeah, you know who you are, Zachary. You're, you're only Zachary I know. Zachary is nine years old. And um, he doesn't tune in because he finds this exciting. He doesn't tune in because uh, he understands all this information. He tunes in to support the network. Thanks, Zachary. Appreciate it. From everybody here on the Mirage Network. Um, network. I also want to... I also want to uh, say hi to uh, Jada. I want to say hi to Sarah. I want to say hi to Reggie. Thank you, Reggie. Cliff. Crystal. Hiru Sista. Kim. Rickshaw. I know who this one is. VNR Girl. You got to change that name. If you want to help, just give me a call. I'll give you a hand. Uh, and I want to I wanna shout out Sharon. Sharon from Trinidad and Tobago. I, the weather must be fantastic. Here in Toronto, it's cold, and uh, I, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it at all. You know what? 
it's funny. I was thinking about this the, the other day. December is the only time of the year that if your car breaks down on the highway, that people will stop and help you. It's that spirit. It's that Christmas spirit. It's that um, goodwill to all man. God forbid if you pull over or, or if you get, uh, get stuck on the highway um, in August or September, nobody's going to save you. Nobody. Only in December they will help you and get out, come out, go out of their way and give you a hand. Now, um, today's show, it is uh, the fight for Christmas. Santa Claus versus um, Jesus. Who's going to win? I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. But this time of the year when I was a kid, it was, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. We looked forward to it. It, it, was, it wasn't just the gifts. It was the family coming together. It was uh, the music. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, we were running around and our, our, the house is full. Um, there's, there's, there's uncles and aunties around the table. They're playing dominoes. They're, they're playing cards. They're eating, drinking the cakes, the cookies, homemade cakes, homemade cookies. It was an amazing time. And of course, it looked beautiful too. You look outside, all the houses are lit up. Uh, snow's on the ground, the moon's out. What a beautiful sight. So um, Christmas as a young man was amazing. I loved it. But then you grew up. Things change. What changed? So today we're going to talk about Christmas. Um, does it uh, have its origins in the Bible? Is it a pagan thing? Um, is it about Jesus? Where does Santa Claus come in? Where, where does he fit in all this? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And to help me talk about this topic, I have a great guest with me. His name is Elder Mike Holloway. Elder Mike Holloway, are you there? Yes, sir. God hey. bless you. I am here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Not bad. Thank you again for, um, you know, taking this time out of your busy schedule to uh, just chime in and, and spend like an hour or so with us. Not a problem. I appreciate the invite. I'm excited about the topic. Good. Now, for those that, um, that don't know who you are, who are you, Mike? <laughs> All right. Again, as stated, I am Elder Mike Holloway. I am an associate pastor of Power, Hope, and Grace Bible Church in the city of Detroit, Michigan. My pastor is Dr. Quentin Wingate, uh -huh. and we uh, thrive on ministering to the people of God. I'm also the founder of Your Urban Church Ministries, and our mission is to educate the culture for Christ. Our job is to help people know what the truth of the gospel is, not to be deceived by cults or false teaching. Mm -hmm. So um, my YouTube channel was Elder Mike, Your Urban Church. Again, that's Elder Mike, Your Urban Church. And when this is where I do uh, the bulk of my teaching and ministry. So uh, thanks again, and I'd appreciate anybody who would like to support or, or, or subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what we do. So thank you. All right. Good stuff. And for the callers or for those that are viewing, this is a call-in show. Uh, so please call in with your uh, opinions, your views. If you have any questions for Mike, call in. This is about Christmas. And we have a cash app, a PayPal. Please donate. It will help us a lot. We are working on phase two. And it's going to blow your mind. If you're, if you're thrilled about this whole setup that we have here, wait till you see phase two. So, um, Mike, very simple. C can you? Oh. So, uh, I, I was going to ask you a question. Apologetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what it, does that mean? What is that? Say that again. What what is what now? I'm sorry. I must apologetic. I oh, apologetics. Yeah. Apologetics. Apologetics. In simple terms, that's what it is. It okay. Is the, yes, sir. In simple terms, apologetic simply means it is the defense 
of the historic Christian faith to defend the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And Jude verse three tells us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, it is to be properly prepared and able to speak truth against mm -hmm. those naysayers that would attack the truth of the scriptures. So in simple terms, that's what it is. Is that word in the scriptures? Like, where does uh, it come absolute. from? Yeah. Yes, sir. And you say, is the word in the yeah, scriptures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the word apologetics, it comes from the Greek word apologia. And uh, yeah, it's right in Jude 3. Uh, right? I see. It's the Greek word there. And it is the defense, defending of the faith. The apolog right. Apologia. Now, is it is that different from a modern Christian belief in well, faith? Well, it, 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 it shouldn't be, but yeah. it could be. Because unfortunately, we have a lot of variant uh, beliefs, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which is why apologetics is necessary. You know, I think pr pr probably all of us at some point, time or another, uh, were introduced and perhaps even embraced some false teaching or false doctrine. Uh, and perhaps could still be doctrines that we need uh, clarity on. Mm. And so that this is why the, the field of apologetics becomes necessary to help to convince those who are persuaded in, into error. You know, and we take doctrine serious. You know, when it comes to truth, the truth makes free, but a lie won't help nobody. So so this is why apologetics is important. So do all apolog apologetics have the same beliefs and views? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. No, no, there, there are different uh, variations to apologetics, mm -hmm. but what apologetics should be is the defense of the Christian faith. And when we say the Christian faith, <clears throat> we typically say the historic Christian faith, because we want the, the, the gospel and the doctrine as delivered by Christ and his apostles. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, over time, doctrine can change, right. people change. Folks uh, morph into other things. But if you really want truth, we want what was delivered through Christ by the hands of his holy apostles. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, blessed are they that believe on me through your words. And so it's important for us to go back to the scriptures to find out what truth is. OK, OK. I grew up I grew up uh, a Roman Catholic and okay. um, we have a lot of statues of Marys and, and crosses and um and pictures of saints and my my parents they they pray to saints do the apologetics kind of fit that that view no sir not okay. at all so so as you mentioned the statues which is what they would call the icons right uh, you yeah. know those things they use to depict some of the saints right and and, and I try to, you know, I want to make sure I represent them properly. They don't believe that they are worshiping the icons. Mm -hmm. uh, how, however, there's no biblical precedent for praying to anyone other than God. Mm -hmm. And so I have a problem with that, you know, along with other uh, other aspects of the Catholic doctrine. You know, they 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 hold the Pope's word as right really on par with scripture. And, and that's problematic as well. None of our words, as, as powerful as we might think we are, none of our words are on par with scripture. Scripture has to be the authority. No man can stand up and say, yeah, I'm changing something. Uh-uh. So the the views of, of, a, of, a, of a Christian and a uh, somebody that's Catholic is really, there's a huge gap in between them? It's it really certainly different. can be a yeah. huge gap. Now, I, I, now, I'm not one that says, you know, every Catholic is, you know, going to right. hell. That I don't know that. However, mm -hmm. I do know that there's some serious error within the Catholic doctrine that has to be addressed. And I really believe that God, you know, will, will lead the sincere saint away from the error into truth if, he's, if his heart is in the right place. Okay. Now, before you get into Christmas, I got to say to my viewers, like I watched a couple of your, uh, your videos because I just wanted to get, you know, get to know who was coming on the show, right? So oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I wanted to, my viewers to know that uh, if they have a question, if they have a view, if they don't believe in something that you're saying, they got to back up what they believe because uh, Mike is a smart guy. He's a smart cookie. So um, come come Bless with you. your facts if you're going to call in. So, Mike, 
You know, it's yes, true, man. Sir. You're a smart guy, man. I'm, I'm telling you, you're a smart guy. Um, so Bless I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm talking to you about Christmas. So give me a, a, a breakdown, a very simple breakdown of Christmas. Where do like Santa Claus kind of fit in? Jesus, where, where did this all kind of develop and snowball to what we have today? Okay, so um, and, and I'll just give a just a brief overview. Christmas is a holiday, <laughs> and, and, and I'm speaking of Christmas in our current culture. Mm. Christmas is a holiday, and the word holiday in this culture simply means a day of festivity, uh, typically where no work is done. Right? You you can Google Christmas right now, and that's what you're going to get. Right? A holiday, a day of festivity when no work is done. And Christmas ha is a holiday. Now, mm -hmm. from the Christian perspective, Christmas is a day that has been set aside to honor or to thank God and give him glory for the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, and it's a celebration, really, of the incarnation, the word that was made flesh, John 1.14, and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. So, so it is in honor of that. When Christ was born, uh, we see a depiction of worship, honor, and praise because even the angels glorified God mm -hmm. and the shepherds that were nearby came and right. they glorified God on behalf of Jesus uh, who was born in Bethlehem. Now, we understand that December 25th is not historically the actual birth date of Jesus Christ. Okay. However, it is a day historically that has been set aside to honor Jesus Christ. And for the from the Christian perspective, that's what it is. Now, over time, and especially within our American culture, amongst other cultures, Christmas has become somewhat commercialized in mm -hmm. the incorporation of Santa Claus and and, and, and even St. Nick has some, some old Christian uh, uh, history to it. You know, there was a, a saint right. by the name of Nicholas who actually did good and brought gifts to orphans and people who are in need. And that, over time, it grew into what we know today as Santa Claus. And I just want to say Santa Claus is no more real than Bugs Bunny. It is a <laughs> fictional, a fictional character. Uh -huh. No, no different than the cartoons our kids watch on Saturday morning. At least right. I used to. Right. Right. So, so, so it's a fictional character. Nobody uh, should be worshiping uh, Santa Claus or or any other person other than Jesus Christ, for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but from the biblical Christian perspective, we embrace Christmas in honor of the birth of Christ, and He was the ultimate gift to the world as the sacrifice for sins. And we, in turn, use that day. And I like some of the things that you were sharing about your childhood. And you remember yeah. it as a as such a joyous time where you it spent was. a quality time with family. And a part of that is giving gifts to one another. Mm -hmm. And that should be in symbolically representing the ultimate gift that God gave to us when he gave his only begotten son. And so that's what Christmas is from the Christian perspective. Now, you said holiday. Is holiday the same as a holy day? Right. So I'm glad you asked that. Okay. I wanted to say that. So the etymology of the word holiday yeah. is holy. Day, right. And so from some of the earlier centuries, especially even within biblical times, mm -hmm. when you had the biblical holy days, that is the etymology of the word. And so the definition actually meant a sacred and religious day set aside to worship one's deity, right? Mm. But that's not the definition of the word within our culture. And, and that's where a lot of people get right. hung up. See, we're, we're not in the first century. The word in its current definition is simply a day of festivity, and people, I'm telling you, most people who say happy holidays, right. they have no deity in mind at all, right? right? It has nothing to do. It is a day of rest, a day of festivity, a day of family. 
And that's what it means in this culture. Mm -hmm. And as long as your heart isn't embracing some false deity, you can't be held responsible for what the etymology of the word is. Truth of the matter is we can get off into the etymology of the word Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all words that we all use on a daily basis. So if we're going to become so strict to what the original intent of these words are, then we're going to have to strip a lot of stuff from our culture in our conversation. For those who are listening to Elder Mike, call in. If you agree what he's saying, if you have a question, the phone lines are open. The mm-hmm. phone, uh-oh, do we have somebody here? Elder, uh, Elder Mike, would you like to take a call? Not a problem, sir. All right, Not let's check problem. it out. Area code 317. 317, you are live with Mike and Unapologetic Rob. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? This is uh, this is Brother Carnell. Carnell, how you doing, Brother Carnell? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm We're- familiar with Elder Mike. So My brother, bless you, man. Where are you yes. calling from, buddy? I'm calling. Right now, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. You got a question, comment? Yes, I do have a question. All right. I have a question and more like a statement as well. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, first question. My question is, why do people tell um, I'm not just going to say Christians, just, just, just people in general. Why do they tell everyone that December 25th is Jesus' birthday? Well, that, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I personally don't know any sound biblical people who say that December 25th is Jesus' actual birthday. Anybody who knows anything about the Bible, <laughs> you know, they would not say that. Now, it's okay to say this is a day we set aside to honor his birth, but anybody that knows anything about history, about about culture, about the scriptures, there's no way to determine that Jesus was born on December 25th. As a matter of fact, all the evidence leads to the fact that he probably was not born on December the 25th. Uh, So people shouldn't say that if they do. They are factually wrong. But I want to make something clear. You can be factually wrong about when Jesus was born and still be a sound Christian. You can still be a Christian. Like God isn't going to condemn a person to hell because, oh, you got my son's birthday wrong. No. Right. A truth of the matter is we ought to honor and worship him every single day, not just wait till a set aside day to right. do it. So, yeah. OK, Colonel, did I answer your question? got something else yeah that, that, that was that was a uh, that was a great uh response and, and and just finally real quickly i just want to also make a statement speak okay. my piece and uh, i'll be off the line no problem uh, so i how i feel about it is i believe i believe it was it was built it was built upon a lie from from the beginning and that's not to say that anyone who observes it or anything or sin or anything like that was free to do what we you know uh we're free to celebrate Christ uh, freely on any day of the week or any day of the year. I understand. But if you notice that it's gotten to the point where uh, the suicide rates goes up around this time of year mm-hmm. because of what's, what's, what's happened, the leaven that's been added into the, uh, to the <laughs> word. You've got to get people this. You've got to get people that. I feel if it was about Christ being... Uh, no one would be wanting to commit suicide because of this so-called holiday. So, Colonel, you said this is based on a lie. What do you mean by that? What was just the December twenty-fifth part? Yeah, they started Christmas started based on a lie that is uh, Jesus' birthday. Okay, and I'm saying Christians started it. I'm saying, but that's the the original. Uh, that's 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 the the root of it. It started far as. Uh, Roman Catholics, mm-hmm. you know, celebrating and they declaring that this to be Jesus' birthday. Uh, Mike, what do you got which, to say about that? Lie. Okay, Mike, what do you got to say about that? Well, yeah, like I said, you know, anyone who declares that this is the actual birthday, you know, they're just factually wrong. You know, that's just not good. <laughs> so it's not right really there. a sin because you got the date wrong. It's not a big deal. It, it, exactly. Really. Now, it's really to speak to. 
Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Mike. You're my guest. Well, I was going to say to, to speak to uh, my brother Carnell's other point. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree that the world has over commercialized the day. And now, is you know, for probably for most, it's not even about Christ. It's about uh, Santa Claus you know, and go, gifts going in debt, trying to <laughs> right. please somebody. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? You know, and and society, this cold world has has over uh, commercialized it so to where you know you feel bad when you can't spend the money, and we built this expectation up for our kids that you got to have all these toys. That now, that my friend, I totally agree with that principle is wrong, which okay. is why uh-huh. leads me right back to the question. Uh, Apologetic Rob asked me, unapologetic yeah. Rob asked me earlier when he talked about us uh, being in apologetics because when a person is taught the sound truth of scripture, mm-hmm. this will help you not get caught up in loving the world. Scripture says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So it becomes important to be biblically sound and not get caught up with the commercialization of the world. Regardless, and they're going to do that to any, whether it's Christmas, whether it's New Year's, whether it's Thanksgiving, the world is going to take it to the extreme, right? My, that doesn't make the celebration wrong that makes people wrong and people will pervert anything they can pervert okay uh Cornell, thank you very much for your call thank you for your time appreciate okay take care answer, sir Eric. thank yeah. you bless you sir appreciate god you god bless god bless caller uh five eight six area code you're on the air with mike caller area code Hello. five hi how you doing Oh, okay. I didn't know I was on. Oh, you're on now. Oh, what's, I got a, what's your name, sir? I, my name's Mike, and I'm calling from the Detroit area, too. So all right. Is, uh, Do you know Mike? Is, uh, no, I don't know him at all. Oh. Former Christian of, of, like, 30 years. Uh-huh. Converted to Israelite. Um, and I got a question for uh, the elder. He calls himself an elder. Do you, in your own house, celebrate Christmas? Do you wrap presents? Do you give your kids presents? Do you put a Christmas tree in your house and those type of things? Do you do that personally as a Christian in your house? Yes. You do that. So yes, you, sir. so we have, you ever read Jer- uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 about a Christmas tree and, and bowing down to that and don't do that in this land. That's well, what me... we were, we were commanded to do that as Israel, not to partake in those type of things. Yeah. And thank you for that question, because that's this is a Jeremiah chapter number 10 comes up every year this time. Right. And mm-hmm. this is why I'm so glad I'm in apologetics, because anybody who is reading the Christmas tree into Jeremiah chapter number 10. And this is no knock against the caller. I appreciate the call and the question. It's a good one. But anybody who is interpreting Jeremiah chapter number 10 as a Christmas tree needs a sound lesson in Christian hermeneutics or biblical hermeneutics because Jeremiah chapter 10 has absolutely nothing to do with a Christmas tree, right? When the, when the carpenters cut down trees to make idols and decorate those idols, that is absolutely not related to a Christmas tree. The only thing, here's what happens in our culture where, when we don't, when we don't study the, the history and the culture behind the scriptures, what we do is we take words that sound similar and equate them with something that's in the current environment. That, my friend, is very dangerous to do. That's what we would call in, in apologetics, eisegesis, to apply a different context than the the context of the original author. That, my friend, leads us into bad theology. Jeremiah chapter number 10 is about carpenters chopping trees down and building idols. That's what it's about. Christmas was not around in Jeremiah chapter number 10. There was no Christmas. There, that, that absolutely mm. has nothing to do. And I can break that down a little further, you That's know, a- but for the sake of time, I'll leave it at that. But Jeremiah chapter 10, I want you to go back and look at it and read it. It has zero to do with Christmas Is- at all. Israelite Mike. Yes. I'm sure you don't agree with that. Do you? Not at all. Not well, at what's all. your take That's on Jeremiah, that? Jeremiah's prophecy was for the children of Israel in this land that we're in now as we came over here on and i'm a, i'm not a black dude i'm a white boy so i'm telling you this as 
the children of slavery came over here in 1619, mm-hmm. as it was Genesis 15, that you was going to go to a land that you know nothing about, and you're going to worship these idols. Don't do that. <clears throat> so if you're doing that, and you ain't partaking in all the commandments that he established in, in, the, in the tablets to follow those, and you follow in Christmas, and you celebrate in Saturnella, which is a Roman festival to the, Saturn, which is Satan, then, my friend, I think that you're involved in paganism, and you ain't worshiping. Jesus wasn't born no 25th of December. No, no, no shepherds grazing, no flocks in nowhere in the 25th of December. Nowhere. So not is, even in Israel. Israelite Mike, is, um, yeah. is so is Jeremiah 10 a prophecy, or is that something that they done back then? And it just carried on till today. That's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. That's for, to, for us. Right. That was, I don't, going on way back then, no, I don't, there wasn't no Christmas. Like he said before, I don't believe there was a Christmas and all that. It's not mentioned in the Bible. There's no mention of the Bible, just as there's only three mentionings of a Christian in a Bible. Okay. There's only three times in the Bible of a Christian. So Jesus wouldn't even know no Christian man. At all. It was all Israel or friends of Israel or ones that were against Israel. But there was no okay. Christians there. That came way, way after Jesus' time. Okay. Let me get back to the guest, Mike. Stay, stay, stay there, uh, Israelite Mike. Don't go nowhere. Uh, Elder Mike, what do you have to yes. respond? <laughs> yeah. Well, again, man, I thank God for apologetics, right? <laughs> Historical research, uh-huh. right? Because anybody who would snatch Jeremiah, out of its context, right? When Jeremiah was clearly talking about the forthcoming or or the coming judgment upon Israel as God uh, took uh, the Israelites into Assyria and the the southern tribe, Judah, into Babylon, right? But all of a sudden, people want to, this is is my point, this is why Mm -hmm. I apologize, this is necessary. People want to Americanize every scripture in the books about America. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just not, right? These scriptures, as a matter of fact, Daniel, while in Babylon, (laughs) while in Babylon, Mm -hmm. praise to God after the 70 years was almost up. He says, God, (laughs) now Jeremiah prophesied, he brought up Jeremiah's prophecy. And he said, Lord, as Jeremiah said, we have been here almost 70 years. Mm. So, 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 so Daniel knew the context, but, but for some reason we want to make it about America. That's not good hermeneutics, right? But Daniel, but then what did God do? He came back and said, well, Daniel, the prophecy is not going to be just 70 years, but 70 times seven years, which, which that 490 years took them unto the Roman Roman captivity, which is the time period that the Christ, Jesus Christ, was born. So again, people, what happens is this, and I'm again, this is no knock against the caller. I'm glad he brought this up yeah. because so many people have embraced this without doing research, with, with, without, without being able to properly understand the context of the scriptures. And so what happens is they make it about America. So when Christ was born, right, Christ established, established the new covenant as through his life, his death, his burial and his resurrection. Right. Bringing to pass many of the things that were stated in Jeremiah. And, and now we here we are some two thousand plus years later yeah. talking about Jeremiah was talking about a Christmas tree. What? No. Come on, you all. We've got to we, we got to say, Lord, help me to understand the scripture in its proper context. We can't just match words. Oh, it says tree. Christmas got a tree. Must be the right. same. No, right. that's not good hermeneutics. What was Jeremiah talking about? If we read the text, it is talking about carpenters cutting down trees making idols and decorating those as idols now if anybody is worshiping a christmas tree you are in sin hear from me first you are in sin but to say do you have a tree you got trees in your yard (laughs) i give gifts you wrap a gift see see here's what happens people have become superstitious Right. Mm -hmm. And so now outward acts that has nothing to do with whether your heart is worshiping or not becomes idol worship. You can't make a mistake in worship. Worship is volitional. It is volitional. So a person in Jeremiah's day, he was talking about people who actually understood that they were bowing down to graven images. 
But we isogeet the text and try to make it about a Christmas tree where folks could care less. After the 25th, them trees on the front, them trees are sitting in front of the house getting ready to get picked up by the garbage man. All right. right? But not the idols in Jeremiah chapter number 10. In All Jeremiah right. chapter number 10, these idols were kept and preserved because they were their gods. Okay. And so, again, people don't understand. Okay. Uh, right. Israelite Mike, you have 30 seconds before I... Uh get some callers so callers stay tuned uh you you want anything to say about that is like mike uh, i i i appreciate it you know I'm, uh -huh. i disagree right I agree wholeheartedly oh and that's my that's my belief mm -hmm. i i don't have no in that that tree and them christmas decorations are what led this man out in the streets with seven kids and a wife that are all christians get out of my house you don't you don't do these things you have to leave my house so that's where there's a clash of two spirits right there it has nothing to do with jesus or anything like that because that jesus that they worship that one will be a white one okay is come down the is israelite mike uh, one second those are on, are, are on hold please we're gonna get to you in a few seconds i just want to I just want to touch on something while uh, Israelite Mike is here. I'm calling you Israelite Mike because my guess is Mike, so I don't want to confuse you two. So Israelite Mike, is it coincidence? I, I believe the scripture is something like they cut a tree, they bring it in, they, they uh, rear it up with nails, and they deck it with silver and gold. Is that a coincidence that it's something that it's done today? I, it, hey, I know what it means. It, you know, people, people can... Uh, you know, do whatever you want to do. You know, they're going to do what they want to do at the end of the day. If, if they, maybe his wife in the house is like, yo, you're going to do this. You're going to put this tree in the house or you're going to be. <laughs> because that's how it really you got to stand up for truth and faith. And he said, you know, and it ain't about no hermeneutics or master's degrees in theology, because when the spirit rests upon you, you got it. That's what it is. It don't have nothing to do with, well, I could take you to this verse and this verse and that verse. My brother's yeah. got a master's in every Bible college from here, West Coast, East Coast, North and South. And and he still thinks the real Jews are in Israel. So, I mean, that it is what you, against what but, it says in but, Revelation. But all fairness, the synagogue. all fairness, uh, oh, uh, Israelite Mike, Israelite Mike, ain't, yeah. it, ain't it about the heart? Like, it doesn't matter. It it's, 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 it's what's in your heart, though, that matters? The Lord knows you, bottom line. He knows what's in your heart. And there's a lot of things we could talk about. Of you course, know, but we, we, we want to stick to the topic. Of course, we could veer off to many topics. <laughs> he, he, know, he, know, he knows your heart. He knows what you're seeking. He know, that's what it says. See, for me, personally, as a Christian that spent time, I went to prisons in Mexico preaching the gospel for Christianity and all kinds of different things. For me, I had to seek. I kept seeking. Not mm. seek. Look. Something, something wrong with that. It ain't right. And his spirit rested upon me, and I came into contact with the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries, bottom line, and came under the teaching of Elder Shadrach and in, in, in seen the truth for what it is, bottom line. I, it, if you don't agree with it, that's that's everybody has a choice to do that. All right, you know, Israelite I'm, Mike. Can I, can, I, can I say something real quick? Yes, I'm just going to uh, say uh, goodbye okay. to Elder uh, Israelite Mike. Israelite Mike, thank Hello. you very much. Right. And... Uh, and Elder Mike, out? Elder Mike, yes, go ahead, buddy. You can respond. Hope I didn't get cut off. Hi, can you hear me? Elder Mike. Elder Mike, Rock, are you can there? You hear me? I can hear you fine. Can somebody text uh, Elder Mike? Tell him that uh, we hear him just fine. Hello. Hi, Elder Mike. Hi, can you hear me? Elder Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. There's a feedback now. Okay, I don't know what, I can't. Some I, okay, I, something. I hear you. Something fine. happened in my headset, but I, I I turned it up on my. Are you good? I think I know you can hear me, but I don't know why I can't hear you through my headset. But let me see if I can fix. Okay, that. no problem. Uh, Let's go to a caller, and then we'll swing around to uh, Elder Mike. Let's go to. Can you hear me now? I, okay, I hear you. Okay, you hear just, me? Just, yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay, now. go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Just real quick, I yeah. wanted to address that. If if my brother was Mike and he from Detroit, we got to hook up, man. If, if you, were, if you were, if, go if you for a beer, to a church to where you were putting people out your house who didn't celebrate Christmas, my brother, you were in the wrong church, right? And, and this is what that people was, think. they say I was, was a Christian. Wife. 
that, it, listen, you, you people say I was a Christian. Not if you was doing that, because Christians don't do that. And again, I'm not knocking you. Hold on for a second, bro. I'm not knocking you. What I am saying is that there are. Hold on for a second. Hey, L -L 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 Mike, you'll have an opportunity to to rebuttal. Just give me a second, please. It, yep. We just can't get two people talking at the same time. Okay, Elder Mike, say your piece, and I'll swing it back to uh, Israelite Mike. Okay, right. So, so again, if you are, if you were going to a church and, and you were taught, or your wife said, if you don't do this, get out my house. Yo, listen, that that's some serious error. I'm talking if you're a Christian. Let me let me say this to any Christian out there. If you out there demanding people worship or celebrate Christmas, you are out of order. That is not Bible, right? So so, so people think because they went to a church, right, that they were Christian or that they know what Christianity is. This is why apologetics exists because there are too many, I'm not even talking about the non-Christians, there are too many Christians caught up in false doctrine. And so brother, that, that, that wasn't Christianity. So I, I don't blame you for leaving that, that. You said you went from Christianity to being a, to, to Israelite doctrine. Well. Well, at the end of the day, right, I don't care what we call ourselves. The word Bible is not even in the Bible. You can call yourself Israel. You can talk, call yourself Christian. I don't care what you call yourself. What I want you to do is believe the scriptures. And the scriptures <laughs> are not condemning a, a 2020 uh, festivic celebration based on a text taken from Jeremiah, eisegeted out of his context. It's just not, period. So people say, well, it's not about hermeneutics. What? So God spent over 2,000 years, really, we want to count the Old Testament, over 4,500 years putting together his holy scriptures. And he going to bypass all of that and speak to you personally? I'm not saying you can't deal with your spirit, but the scripture got to be the authority. Because most folks who think they're being led by the spirit are being led by their emotions. And how do I know when my emotions are getting off? I got to line them up with the scriptures. And so hermeneutics matters. The way you study the Bible matters. You can be wrong, but the scriptures cannot be. So if I can show you in scripture, which I've already done, that the scripture wasn't a talking about a America, that it was talking about uh, Babylon and Assyria, then, then that should end this discussion. But instead, people say, well, forget about that. You know, I know what God told me. No, listen, if God, if, if there's something telling you something that's contrary to scripture, that something is not God. And I got to be real with you, brother. And this is, again, why we've got to address false teaching on a daily basis, mm -hmm. because people believe stuff with no proof. All right. Israelite Mike, what do you got to say? Well, first I want to correct something. He Go ahead, buddy. Me out. It, was, it was kind of a mutual thing because I don't want to be around all that paganism, bottom line, because that's, <laughs> that's, that's totally against what I believe as of this moment. So that's, let me clear that up. She didn't say, get out if you ain't going to be do this around the tree. It wasn't like that at all. It was me seeing them putting up trees and all these little things that they do every year religiously, but following none of the truth of what was put down in the law. They don't, I don't see them uh, celebrating Feast of Tabernacles or none of those things, but Christmas is the most important thing right now. So that's, what I, that's where I'm coming from. I, you, you make a lot of sense, Mike. I agree with you on a lot of things. If we talk probably face to face, we'll probably agree on a lot of things. And like you said, I didn't, God didn't personally say, do this, do that. No, but I know what I believe. And I believe that Jeremiah 10 talking about to this day and age, don't worship around no tree because when you bow down and grab that present up under there, you bowing down under that evergreen wow. tree, and it's a, it's a wow. cross around your neck. It ain't no different. No, it's, a, it's all part of paganism and idol worship. And that's all I have to say. I appreciate the conversation and uh, good times, man. Okay, thank you, Israelite Mike, for calling. We're gonna grab another call. Okay, sure, ciao, buddy. Ahead. We're gonna call another. We're gonna grab another call. Area code. One, uh, 416, you are live with Mike and Rob. Hey. Hey, who's this and where you're calling from? Good evening. From? Good this evening. Donna Sherman calling. Hi, Donna. I have to say, um, the person you call Elder Mike, I agree with him. The, the, the scriptures is a 30, but he's saying that, but he is contradicting himself. Did you say that the scripture is a fir tree? Yes. Okay. He said that's the authority that uh, Israelite Mike should listen to the scripture, right? 
So I agree with what he's saying. The scripture has the authority. Listen to the scripture. But unfortunately, he is not listening to the scripture. Because as I read Jeremiah 10, <laughs> Jeremiah is telling his people, okay. do not l learn the way of the heathen. They cut down the tree of the forest and they deck it with silver and gold. He is saying that is not pertaining to Christmas. He was probably right because in that time, it wasn't called Christmas. It was called Xmas. And a mass is a service for the dead. Okay. The, the word Christmas, meaning Christmas, tricking the Israelites into worshiping, the pagan worshiping, came in after they were trying to get the Israelites to to follow the, the, the philosophy, worshiping of the sun god and all these different things that they worship. So so, so uh, just to get this clear, just to get it clear, you're saying that Jeremiah 10, it is talking about a tree and it's something that they used to do back in the days and over time it got renamed, repackaged, and today it's Christmas. From Xmas to Re Christmas, correct. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So, so let me... Now we need to take that Bible and read it with a fine teeth comb mm -hmm. because you cannot, first of all, the Bible is not a Christian book, so I don't care who call themselves Christian and what they want to do. The Bible is a book for God's chosen people, the descendants of slavery. Mm -hmm. And because we've been so stiff naked, disobedient, mm -hmm. that is why we went into slavery. So we need to correct ourselves if we want to serve the big G God in the Bible. I wish I was close to this gentleman that's calling himself Israelite. Mike, I will give him high five. I'm glad to find his faith so well founded. I'm glad to know that he has read the book and understanding and decide to follow the spirit of truth. Okay, Sharma, let me ask you a question. If somebody's serving Jesus or the big G God, you say, with their heart. Does it really matter what they do, though, as long as it's coming from the heart? Incorrect. Because to serve something means you have to follow the instructions. Okay? That is what is considered of righteousness. Following the instructions, that is what makes you differentiate. You know that you're serving this God. I am following the instruction of the big G God. That means I am following the things he said to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And... Um, we run into Christians, I'm talking about now, run into to say you want to celebrate the birth of Christ right. or the birth of Jesus, not the birth of Christ, but the birth of Jesus, mm -hmm. and you don't even know nothing about Jesus. Hmm. Like, I don't want no one out in the world coming and say they're celebrating my children's birthday. They don't know my children. They don't know nothing about my children. Jesus was an Israelite. Even one of the Christmas tunes says, born is the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. But over time, they try to lie and change the, 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 the pagan ways and get the children of Israel to, to, to worship their God and to turn away from the true and the most high God. We need to stop this nonsense now. It's 2020. This man is on the phone and he's saying that he is European. He's saying he's white. He's saying he's non-black. And at the end of the day, it's nothing to do with black or white. Whatever color you are, as long as you decided you're going to go on the side of truth and serve the most high God. He is correct. When you cut down the, the tree and you put the decorated with all the lights and all the things and you put a big star on it. It's a representation of Lucifer. Satan, S-A-T-A-N, S-A-N-T-A, Santa Satan is the same thing. Read the description of Lucifer in the Bible. He's fair and beautiful. He was even called the morning star. We need to cut this nonsense out. We need to stop worrying about the collection plate. We need to start teaching the truth. Let the truth be told. Okay, thank you. And get our people out of this. All right, thank yes. you, Sharma, for your call. Uh, Elder Mike, I'm going to grab a couple more calls, then you could answer and rebuttal all of them. Is that cool? Uh, okay, all right. I was, <laughs> I'm on fire over here, but all right. <laughs> 
so I got another call. Oh, I want to grab, yeah. Uh, area code 586. Hello? Hey, who's this? Hey, this is the two... Sorry, you chipped out. Can you say your name again? The two-edged sword calling in. My poetic name. Hello? Hi, you just chipped out a little bit. Say it again. Sorry, what's your name? Two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. Speak up just a little more, please. Okay, let's see if you got this. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, two-edged okay, sword, good. you said, right? Yes, correct. And where are you calling from, two-edged sword? Toronto. Toronto. Okay, what's your comment and or question? What's on your spirit? Okay, comment and question. Um, representing um, Elder Mike. Not Can you Elder speak Mike, up, uh, Two-Edged Sword? Yes, um, I would just want to shout out to... Um, I, still can't, I still can't hear you. Oh, oh, boy. Let me see. Okay, can you hear me better? Are you on Bluetooth or something? No, I'm not. Are you on Let speaker? <laughs> no, I'm not on speaker. Can you hear? Let me see if I can get it. Can you hear me? Okay, you sound a bit better. Okay, better let's now? try it again. Let's try it again. Go ahead, yes. Okay, yes. So, um, just want to shout out to um, Fama and Israelite Mike and to Elder Mike. Now, do you celebrate Passover, Tabernacles, anything that Jesus, when he was on earth, celebrated? That was a question for him. Okay. So, Elder Mike, did you hear the question? I did. I would prefer she go ahead and address her concern. That way I can give a complete answer. Okay. Did you hear that double-edged sword? Yes. Okay, my concern is Jesus celebrated those things, just, just to let you know. And um, celebrating Christmas, like every um, the last two callers said, it's a pagan holiday. You cannot steal someone's diary. First of all, Jesus was not a Christian. He was an Israelite. He was from the tribe of Judah, just um, to let you know that. So you got to do some more history, some more research, some more digging on who Jesus was, where Jesus came from learn his history, learn his culture, and learn the things that he do in order to follow him. He was not a Christian, and to be called a Christian is like being called a nigger. It is Ooh. not good. It's um, just degrading an individual when you're called a nigger. Back in the day, when they called them Christians, they were mocking them. So Christians, Christians should not be using our book, which was stolen from us. It's a family diary. It's a history of a family, of a people that um, forsake their God and their God cursed him time and time and time again like you mentioned earlier and then he would take them back all the time but the people continuously just do not listen to their God and he put them back into slavery thank the God of Israel that we came out of slavery 400 years which passed um, in August of last year so now we're in the time of freedom right and that's what we got to do and in order for you to learn and really understand the Bible you I would suggest you Call the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry and get some of the teachers to teach you what uh, about the Bible. I'll have a conversation with some of the um, the teachers at the Israelite Nation. That's my comment. Okay, Harry, don't go nowhere, because Elder okay. Mike is a smart dude, and I'm sure he has a lot of stuff to say. Don't don't go nowhere. I want to hear what he has to say. Elder Mike. Okay. Yeah. The floor is uh, yours. Uh, how can I say this? People don't know the Bible. Jeremiah chapter ten. Is talking about cutting down trees and making idols. That that kind of that kind of sounds like the stumbling block for for a lot of people, huh? Yeah, they, they, they're. I mean, Paul Paul dealt with this same thing, and I'm gonna bring out this in the scripture real quick. But, okay. But but here's the problem: people don't want to read the scripture. Nobody's calling with any proof. The last caller talking about Christmas was formerly Xmas. What? Okay. What historical research have you done? What? Squat, listen. <clears throat> For the rest of the callers, cite some some sources so I can depict them and, and help you understand. I told you, Elder Mike is sharp, man. You can't come up with, you can't call and just have no facts. Right, they're just calling in with emotions. It's pagan. Well, it's pagan because you think it's pagan, and I uh -huh. would encourage you not to celebrate because that's what your heart believes. But right. when a person, if you read Jeremiah chapter 10 in context, see, this is why apologetics is important. When you read it in context, 
They made wooden idols from the trees. People mm. think that they decorated the trees. The last caller talked about a star on top. Where is that in scripture? <laughs> That's not in Jeremiah chapter 10. Stop making up stuff. Stop it. You don't I missed have that part. to do that. They <laughs> chopped down trees and the Bible is clear that they made wooden idols that they decorated and they fastened those idols with nails, right? So so into, into whatever. They fastened them too. And those things became their idols. People mm. don't want people have believed YouTube clips, YouTube videos, hearsay, you know what I'm saying? And they've gotten caught up in stuff that's just not Bible. Let me read something real quick. Go ahead. Real quick. In, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter number eight, Paul was talking about actual meat that was actually used in pagan worship. Pagan worship. And Paul said this. He said this in verse number eight. He says, um, uh, uh, verse number nine, he says, beware lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. So basically what he is saying is there's some people who have weak consciences and I'm good with that. All the people calling me in now have weak consciences and I'm good. You're superstitious about something that you have observed to be pagan that's not pagan for everybody else but it because it's pagan for you leave it alone but but to try to make it pagan for everybody else is is wrong paul makes it clear here he says this in verse number let's see here uh well let me just paraphrase here because I, I can end up reading this whole chapter paul said you could be sitting down in the pagan temple eating <laughs> eating the meat the meats that were actually participants in the pagan ceremonies. Paul said, don't ask no questions, man. Sit down and eat. But people who call in are going to be, oh, Michael, that's a pagan. That's a pagan thing. No, it's not pagan, my friend. It, 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 the scripture says this very clearly. Nothing in and of itself is unclean, but to him who esteems anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So for me, I got trees in my backyard. I've got trees in my front yard. It can be a tree in my house. You got plant, you decorate. I'm sure everybody calls in. You decorate your home. There is no sin in decorating. There is sin in idolatry. So people, please listen, get the fact straight again. I'm not pushing Christmas. This isn't even about Christmas for me, to be honest with you. It's about Christian liberty. I'll say this last thing. Mm -hmm. Titus, Titus. In Galatians chapter number two, decided he didn't want to be circumcised. He wanted to continue in the pagan practice of uncircumcision. I know y'all don't like that. <laughs> he, he wanted to continue in the pagan practice because that's really the, the, what, what the sign of the pagan and the Gentile, those who did not worship the God of Israel, was uncircumcision. And they, they wanted to circumcise Titus. Paul said, no, leave him alone. Okay. Leave him alone. And why? And he went on in chapter number five and chapter number six. He says, if you are circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. What are you saying? These outward things are not what make a person righteous or unrighteous. The people here, they haven't asked me about... Uh, they haven't asked me if, if, I, if I'm living holy, if I'm, I've been married 26 years, you're not cheating on your wife, you, you're telling the truth, you preach, I'm feeding the, you know, doing all the poor, but they're saying, right. you've got a tree, pagans. You, you understand what I'm, yeah. where I'm coming from? Yeah. Things that have nothing to do with what comes out of the heart of the man are being used to determine whether one is in right relationship with God. Listen, all these folks out here, listen, you can have a Christmas tree and go to hell. You can say Christmas tree is pagan and go to hell. What you need to do is believe the scriptures and the scriptures are not talking about a Christmas tree. And again, you all get your facts straight. If you think Jeremiah chapter 10 is talking about a Christmas tree, I can't trust your theology because you are wrong. You are simply historically wrong. And it's certainly not talking about a mirror. Okay, double-edged sword, you got 30 seconds. What do you say? Okay, so, yes. So, Elder Mike, you said that it's nothing to do about Christmas, correct? Can That's you answer me that? Song. Yes. Okay. So what? So you, what are you trying to say now? Because um, it's not about Christmas. It's about the Bible. Right now, is an Israelite book, and that's what you got to understand. It's not a Christian book. So that. all these Christians. Sorry. Say what you're saying. I'm gonna address that comment next. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, it's an Israelite book, not a Christian book, and you got to understand that. And you cannot teach from a book that you don't understand. 
You understand? Even if you're married 26 years or what or how many years you're married, it does not matter because you're not living. First of all, you didn't answer my question if you celebrate Passover, tabernacles, all these things that Jesus celebrated when he was on earth. Uh, would you like to answer that before I go ahead? No. I, I, well, let me tell you. Do you understand? Me, Do you know what they are? Because you're a Christian and you're supposed me, to be reading the Bible, right? No, I'm a Christian and I believe the Bible. That's the problem. But here's the thing. Let me rephrase that. I do in their fulfillment. Christ is my Passover. You can keep eating that unleavened bread all you want. It ain't helping you. Christ is my Passover lamb. I embrace the one who shed his blood. That goat blood ain't helping you. So I'm that Christ blood. And that's what covers me, my family, and my home. So in its fulfillment, I celebrate. He is, he is tabernacled in me by way of the Holy Spirit. You can keep pitching a tent in your backyard all you want, but unless Christ be tabernacle in your heart and we as the body be the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, then your pitching that tent once a year is not going to help you. Let no man judge you in meat, in drink, in festivals, in things of this nature. Those things were a shadow of things to come, but Christ is the fulfillment. He is the fullness of all those things. I'm not knocking you if you want to celebrate those things. Do that, but understand that that's simply culture, not command. Christ isn't coming back for people who got lamb's blood on the door. He's coming back for a person who has placed his heart in faith in him. You all are getting so caught up on the outside, then we're not even worried, don't even care about what's going on on the inside. That was my point in bringing up some of the other things, not to boast of myself at all. I'm here to say that we are all in need of the grace and favor of God in Israel, just like Israel did. And she said, Israel is an Israelite book. Israel is a book for all who believe. You can be Israelite. You can be Gentile. It does not matter. You, if you're not an Israelite, you can't teach. Where, show me that scripture. Show me the scripture that says it's an Israelite book. It doesn't. You see how people can just say stuff just because somebody told them and, 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 and then tell me they're giving me scripture. Quote me a scripture that says that the Bible is an Israelite book. Yes, it was written. Okay, by let, can I can I can I cut you off there for a minute? Because I don't have too long. First of all, when you go to Revelations, it talks who who was the twelve tribes that he called? Twelve be- um, tribes of Christianity or twelve tribes of Israel. First of all, he never said any time that the God of the Bible was sp- speaking. He never spoke to a Christian ever once. That's not true. He always spoke to his people. Go That's to Amos three. If you need some education and some real knowledge and really want to be, as you call yourself, an elder and understand what elder have to say because it's a communication, I'm going to beg you, just call the Israelite nation. They'll sit down with you and they'll go to the scripture with you because you're talking things you don't understand. We are supposed to call them with facts and you have not placed any facts yet. Okay. So you do I'm not the understand the Bible. Here. You've quoted no scripture, right? Uh, what you've done is I just quoted you some scriptures, right? <laughs> Double-edged sword. Revelations. What does Revelation talk about? 12, um, did he call the 12 tribe of Christianity or 12 tribe of Israel? But you, what you did was straw man. You no, 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 no. Me ask your question. Where the Bible is an Israelite book, you went to the 12 gates. I agree with you. It has the 12. That That's not the question, though. You said the Bible is an Israelite book. Show me that scripture. Correct. Show me the scripture. But I'm, gonna sh- I, I'm showing you this. That's one scripture that's to tell scripture you that's an Israelite it. book. Because the God is calling to the Israelite. That's who his children is, people. Yep. Amos chapter 3. 3. You, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Just know your book. Know your scriptures. Well, if you don't know them right now, that's on the sense. Just get your Bible. Guys, you let's not, guys, let's not talk over each other. So, uh, double-edged sword. I'll give you some more time because I know why they call you double-edged sword. Uh, then I'll throw back to uh, to Mike there. So, Slow it down, Double Edge Sword. I know you're very passionate. Okay. Just slow it down so we could understand it. So he has yeah. a point. Throw some scriptures and just slow it down. Simplify it for me and for the rest of the viewers. And uh, for the viewers, call in. I'm not, I'm not looking at the chat. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just manning the, the calls here. So please call in with your, uh, your opinions and views. So Double Edge Sword. Uh, yeah. all I, I, it got con- kind of jumbled there. I heard Amos and I heard Revelation. What was your point? Let's start really slow with, yes. okay, so he, go ahead. Yes. He agreed with, um, in Revelation where he called the 12th wreck showing right there and then that is an Israelite book. That's One, not what it, Amos you actually Jack- isolated that though? <laughs> Sorry? Well, names I have to isolate it. does not say this is an Israelite book. You can't make what? it. Say Are what you kidding me? Okay, so so double edged sword. What do you mean by revelation? Like, what are you trying to get at? Simplify it. 
Talk to okay, me, man. Let me, let me go to Revelation chapter 12. Okay. I think it's in Re- Yeah. Do you have your book? Um, no, no, just, just read it. Don't worry. Just go ahead. This is not Bible study. Oh, go ahead. Nice and yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, Let me try to bring up this scripture. Where I, just, I want to see the scripture. Paraphrase. It says this is an Israelite book. Because he called the tribe. Okay. Pretty much in the scripture, he called all the tribe. The tribe of Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Natalite, the tribe of um, Jacob. Jacob's children, he called. Uh, all those. Are you okay? The so here, that was not called. Yeah. Are you trying to say that in Revelation, when there's like twelve gates, and each gate is gates. is named after the twelve tribes of Israel, are you saying that only belongs to Israel? Yes, it's only the tribal is not a Christian book. No matter how you cut, dice, or slice it, it's given to the children of Israel. When the God of Israel approached Moses. He didn't say he was the God of the Christians. He said, by what name? He's going to go into Egypt and call his children out. There were Israelites in the land of Egypt on the slavery. And he said, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. These is the men that worship him. And the reason why we were given that name, so we will know, because there are many gods in the earth, which you're serving. I don't know who you're serving, Elder Mike, but you're not serving the God of the Bible. And this is the God you're supposed to be serving, nope. right? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. I don't know if you know these three men. And that's hence where the Israelites came from in those days. And if you want to take it all the way back to Gen- um, Genesis, we can go there. But it's not the show tonight for that. Let me respond. You, 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 you've given no scripture that validates your claim. If I say that the book is... I Notice, I didn't say the Bible is just for Christians. If I did, then the onus would be on me to find a scripture that that says that. But you said the Bible is for Israelites. And, and to prove it, you simply quote it where Israel is mentioned. Well, I can quote where Canaanites okay. are mentioned. Hold on, hold on. I can quote plenty verses where Gentiles are mentioned, right? So, so that does not prove anything, your opinion. And so because you have no scripture, my sister, then then it's not. Okay, let's go to Amos chapter three. Let me finish. Because you have no scripture, Amos chapter three is not going to say this is an Israelite book. I agree that God called Israel. So showing me a verse where God called Israel doesn't prove anything because I'm going to turn and show you that God added to the congregation of Israel Gentiles. And so, so yes, God called Israel. That proves nothing to me. I agree with that. But God also said the Gentiles would be made fellow heirs and fellow partakers of the same promises. Ephesians chapter two and Ephesians chapter number three. You have failed to show a scripture that says okay, that. Hold on. I'm trying to find this one here for you. Book. Please show the scripture. This is what I want you to do. Show the scripture that says this is an Israelite book or admit, at least admit, that um, that's your opinion. Okay, double-edged sword, you got, okay, yes. I'll give you 10 seconds. I got, I got more calls to get to. I'm trying to say the one thing. You want, you want, listen, a double-edged sword, listen, listen, we still got time. Do you want to, you want to get your stuff call together and call back? I'm here. Yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah, I'll call back in. Okay, double edged sword. Call him back. I got your number here. As soon as I see you, I'll grab you. Okay, sounds excellent. Thank okay, double edged sword. Thank you very much. Let's go to caller area code three four seven. You are live with Elder Mike and Apologetic Rob. Three. Hello. Four. Can you hear me? I hear you clearly. Who's this? Grace and peace. Grace and peace. This is Cynthia Yael. Also known for spiritual week. Grace and peace to you all. Where are you calling from? New York, New York. Nice. What's on your spirit? And just speak up a little louder so we can all hear you. Yes, hold on. Let me take it off speaker. Ah, that would help. Yes. Um, you know, Elder Mike, thank you, my brother, for um, presenting the word. Um, and the spirit of God is, is on you, my brother. Praise the Lord. We just Bless have you. to remember not to be um, traditional, cardinal-minded. Uh, this is what the children of Israel failed and failed and failed and failed. They, they just continue to do, be cardinally-minded. Our Lord and Savior, our God, is not in traditions and customs. He wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
And I find it quite, quite, you know, this is this goes back to times of old. They always go against Christ. And the one little holiday that the American people follow, which I do not follow Christmas myself, that's my uh, choice, um, but the one ch- uh, holiday the American people and other uh, countries choose to celebrate Christmas is the one that's re- always being targeted by the Israelites. I thought you loved Christ. Why not go out for Halloween? Why not go out for, you know, the, 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 anything else? But they always go against, you know, Christ. So anything that represents Christ, they're going to try to bring it down because, again, it's an anti-Christ spirit um, oftentimes in these um, Israelite camps. Um, when you go back to the traditions of the elders who taught us wrong, um, this is what happens, unfortunately. So, so let me get this straight. You chipped out just a little bit. Do you celebrate Christmas? I do not. Not anymore. You only do? Because, you do not. Right, you s- only because, right, I don't do anything that a lot of people do. If no. everyone's going this way, I, I can't do it. Something's not right with that picture. Am I no, well, why Something's don't you celebrate right. Christmas? Well, again, I just, I just feel like everyone does it. So I was kind of like, okay, what's going on? And, and like someone called in, they mentioned at the time, people will rob. Because you can't afford gifts, now you feel like you, you get, you're loving your child less. It was messing with my spirit. So is it, is it because it's, it's told, commercialized? I'll give my child gifts when I choose to give her gifts. Hmm? Is it because it's commercialized? Is this the reason? Again, it's just because it, it, it makes me... It put me in a spirit of I have to provide something materialistic. Do you understand? It, it just put a lot of pressure. Like when I was younger, I'm 41 now, um, but when I was younger, there were times, hey, let me not pay the rent because I want to give gifts to my child. That's completely insane. But that was the, um, what I thought was acceptable. This is how I show love for my child. Again, it just put me in the wrong mind frame, which we do see that. Um, but we're, we shouldn't be, I don't, I'm not against anyone that participates in, as long as you're not sitting behind it. You should be giving every day. Every okay. day should be Christ day. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your call. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Mike. Yes, sir. So the, the, the birth of Jesus, really, it's a question. It's, a, it's up there. It's a question. Sure. Um, the tree is, where does it come from? Um, we know that ancient, ancient Rome, they had Sat- Saturnalia. It was celebrated for 12 days. Winter solstice. Is uh-huh. it coincidence that it's, it's in line with this Christmas celebration? But it's not, right? It's so not? Saturn- okay, explain. The Saturnalia Festival yep. was not on December 25th. Matter of fact, I believe, and I'm putting my resource now here, but I believe it ended like on December 14th. Again, people who don't do their research, they try to, they they try to make bad parallels, right? So the winter solstice was a, a couple week festival, right? Not mm-hmm. a daily cel, not a one day celebration, right? But people try to make parallels. Now, now the same people that says that's Saturnalia, and then people say, what's the day after Friday? Saturday, and guess what they're doing when when they say these days of the week were named in honor of the Saturn God, Saturn, Saturnalia as well. But, but, but it's okay. You see people pick and choose their paganism, right? You know, they're often called the paganism police. They pick and choose what pagan practice that they think is acceptable. Right. But, but, but again, this is why in this culture, we are in America, in this culture, Mm -hmm. a, a holiday is a festive day and i i like something my sister who just who just uh spoke said she said i choose not to celebrate and guess what there's nothing wrong we're as as a christian we don't legalistically bind people to celebrate anything but the issue that the israelites have had since the bible days Mm -hmm. is legalistically binding people to things that adds no righteousness Jesus told the Pharisees like this, listen, you all spend all this time cleaning the outside of the cup, but on the inside is dead men's bones. And therefore, uh, God told Isaiah, I take no pleasure in your sacrifices, in your feast days, in your givings, and all of these ceremonies, because your heart isn't right. 
And so what did Christ do? He fulfilled the law embodied. And now trusting in him is our righteousness. It's not about the outward circumcision of the flesh. It's not about outward practices. Don't get me wrong. Idolatry is still wrong. Anybody who bows down, some people who talking about that Christmas tree, they bow down to that 72 inch flat screen every single day and don't see no wrong. Spend 10 hours in front of it in five minutes reading a Bible. But because somebody has a tree in their house, they want to judge and you're judging falsely. You're condemning children of God for a decoration that they aren't worshiping. So again, I'll stop there. I know you got other callers. Yeah, let's go to a call. Let's go to a call. Area code 770. You are live. 770. Hi. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Larry. Larry? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Did you say Larry? Yeah, Larry. Larry. How you doing, Larry? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. That's nice. Yeah, I just uh, have a comment um, in this regards to uh, some things that uh, Double Edged Sword said. Yep. And which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, first thing I was going to talk about was um, her. I think it was her that referred to being called a Christian is the, is, is uh, equivalent to being called a near. I believe is what she said. Yes, the N word. Yes, it's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous because <laughs> it. it <laughs> If that's the case, then Paul and Peter have uh, have uh, have issues because both of them and uh, affirmed in Acts. Uh, I think Peter was. I'm sorry, Paul was speaking to a Agrippa, and Agrippa said, "You know, you always almost. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm, you almost uh, convinced me to become a Christian." And, and Paul said, "You know, I, I wish that you were. I wish that you did." So Paul affirmed, you know, um, the, the word Christian. And also, how did he um, firm in that, in that scripture, Larry? Um, he, he, how did he I, firm I mean, in that, that 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 he was a Christian from that scripture? Say again. How did he firm that he was a Christian from that scripture? Um, be, because he says that um, when he said that, uh, I, I wish that you will become one. He didn't right? say that. So that, that's 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 the affirmation of it right there. No, he, he didn't. didn't say, he didn't no, say no, that. No, don't call me a Christian. Or you know, don't. I, I I want you to be an Israelite. He didn't say that. That's not what he said. But when he had the All opportunity right? to identify himself, I believe there was four different occasions, three or four different occasions that Paul identified himself as an Israelite. Never one time yes. did he say he was a Christian. Yes, he did. But what is what is a Christian? A Christian is simply a disciple of Jesus Christ. Period. That that's that's what a Christian is. So uh, did he ever say I'm not a disciple of Jesus Christ? Because if you go if you go to um uh, I believe it's in Acts when when the, the the name was first ascribed to us, it um they they, they ascribed it as the followers or either the uh, disciples of Christ uh, of, of of Christ. That's what a Christian is. So we're gonna to need to go back and have a true definition of what a Christian is. Can you can you tell me where that is? Uh, that Christianity is that means follow of of Christ. Hold on, hold on. But but before I, before we do that, yeah, no but problem. Then, what, but but then what what about uh, Peter? Peter says that you know if you suffer as a Christian, all right, that's that, that's in Scripture as well. That's another affirmation of it. I think that's in, uh, I think it's in First Peter. Uh, he says, if you suffer as a Christian, okay? Um, that's another affirmation of it. Yeah. So the, the word Christian um, is, is, is there in the New Testament, all right? Mm -hmm. Find out what a Christian is first before you start ascribing all this other stuff to it, uh, uh, all this extra stuff. The second thing I, I want to address, um, she says that, um, the, the, in the book of Revelation, she was trying to use the, the, the gates, the name of the gates, to say that, that um, the, the Bible is written for Israelites. But right there in the first chapter, when, when, Christ, um, when, when uh, John got the Revelation, he said, write it to the seven churches of Asia. Mm. All right, who, who, were the, who were the seven churches of Asia? The, these were both Gentiles and Israelites who were followers, followers of Christ. Amen. Okay, Larry, let me ask you, let me get back to the topic, Christmas. You celebrate Christmas? Yes, I do celebrate. I, I celebrate the birth of Christ. Okay. I, cele I, ce so, I celebrate the birth of Christ. I do not have a Christmas tree in my house, neither do I have up decorations, but I do get with my, my family members that do, and I have no problems with celebrating the birth of Christ. I do not believe that Christ was born 
on December 25th. Um, however, mm-hmm. I can celebrate Christ uh, 365 days a week. Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 365 days a year. I'm yeah. sorry. I can celebrate his birth 365 days a year and not violate not one of the most high laws. Now, why not Why not uh, have a, uh, a tree? You say you don't have a tree. Um, I, I, I don't have a tree right now because it's, it's, it's not convenient for me right now. I did used to have trees, but okay. uh, it, it has nothing to do with um, me thinking that it, it, it's pagan. And I think, and, and Elder Mike is absolutely right, Jeremiah, that, that verse in Jeremiah has nothing to do with the Christmas tree. Thank you. Because man. he's right. Because uh, it says that that um, they chopped down the trees, and it says the handiwork of the axemen. So that means that that they're carving, they're carving idols, and then they overlay the the idols with, with gold or silver mm-hmm. or jewels, and then they fasten it to the floor. That's what the scripture says. Thank and you. he's right; Christmas wasn't even around um, during that time, so that makes no sense either. All right, that makes no sense either. But but going back to your question, I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of stuff in, but. Um, no, um, I, I don't have a tree, but I do celebrate the birth of Christ. I have no problem with it. And and why did you pick December twenty fifth? If there's that's, no that's, really that's evidence just, that's just, of his that's birth, just tradition. Tradition. I mean, that, that's a tradition okay. that's, that's been handed down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't know exactly when Christ was born, but it's, it's a tradition, and it doesn't violate anything. When I look in um, in the scripture. There's nowhere in there that says, you know, uh, you can't celebrate the birth of Christ on the 25th. It's not in there. So ain't. Now, now, even though that uh, the ancient Jews never celebrated Christmas, it wasn't part of their culture. I'm sorry, uh, okay. birthdays, birthdays. I'm talking about birthdays. That the ancient Jews yeah. never celebrated birthdays. It wasn't part of their culture. Well, okay. one reason why it wasn't part of their culture is because of the different times. If you weren't rich, even tracking Absolutely. time, if even tracking time, see, this is why I do historical research. Even tracking time for the poor was was difficult. They they didn't even track time like we do on you know on the calendars and things of that nature. Right. But you do see, uh, you know, the John the Baptist when he was slain on the birthday of the Herod and and things. So when those that were wealthy and had resources to track they tracked it and so but again we don't what we don't want to do is argue from silence to say well what we we're commanded to obey the scriptures we can't say that we shouldn't do something the scripture doesn't mention at all otherwise we couldn't be on youtube because there's no mention of youtube on the scripture so elder elder mike elder mike be fair they kept they kept the calendar they kept new moons they kept sabbaths they kept feast days how they keep track of all this there were no calendar no, I agree with you that they kept those holy days, and those days were actually even governed by the authorities of Israel. We're talking about the common man keeping track of birthdays. Again, it wasn't different. It's not like they all they went, they got a birth certificate sent to their home. The culture was just different. But even let's say let, let's say they could have. All right, I'm, I'm not even trying to make that a huge issue. Let's say they could have. There's still nothing in Scripture. To, that prohibits a person right. from saying that I'm going to worship the Lord on this day. That's the point that we're trying to make. If a person chooses not to, then we're okay with that because we aren't legalistic. What the problem is when these are telling us, oh, you what? You've got a tree. So now we're getting into legalism and we're trying now to equate an outward act with righteousness, which is dangerous because it now takes away from the full righteousness that we can only receive through faith in Jesus Christ. Larry, you're cool. Hey, man. You got everything and, out? And, uh, Rob, can I say something else? Yeah, um, go ahead, man. Uh, to answer your question about yeah, you said the Israelites, the ancient Israelites didn't do it, but okay, so let's let's listen to let's let's hear what Christ said. He didn't say go out and make um, Israelites of all nations. Preach. That's not what he said. All right, so that means that we're not to go out and and and, and make people Israelites and, and put that culture on all nations. Thank that's you. not that's that's nowhere in, in, in the New Testament. That, that, that's the problem, and, and, and by you asking that question, okay, the Israelites didn't do it. Okay, yeah, the Israelites didn't do it, but you don't have to accept the Israelite culture in order to, to enter into this new covenant and have a relationship with the Most High God. Exactly. 
Okay, thank you, Larry, for your opinion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Mm-hmm. Oh, Call, you too. Caller, area code, let's go to 647. 647, you're live. 647. Hello. Hi. Hey. Who's this? Is this Wester back again? Who's this back again? The two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. Hey. Excellent. Did you find what you were looking okay. for? Yeah, I got a few scriptures. There's plenty more. Just speak up just a couple. little louder. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me more? Can you hear me? A little bit better, but Hello? still it could be better. It's better. Do you want me to call back and see if I pick up the No, no. Just speak a little louder. You should be fine. Yeah. So let's go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14 to 12. Uh, a double-edged my sword. My engineer is saying that the sound is bad. Can you try calling oh. back? Or do you have us yeah, in... okay, I'll call back. Okay. Okay, I'll call back in. No problem, no problem. Let's go to another caller. It's a 708. 708. You're live with Unapologetic mm -hmm. Rob and Mike. Oh, Hey, can you turn down your YouTube or whatever you're listening to in the background? Uh, can you shout out again? Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Oh, my name is Dina. Dina, where are you calling from? Uh, Gary, Indiana. Okay, you have a question, a comment for Elder Mike? Uh, I just wanted to give the scripture to, uh, what was her name, uh, Double-edged sword. Double-edged sword, yes. Psalms, Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Uh, the pastor Mike can read that. Oh, you, you don't want to elaborate on it? No, you, you go ahead and read No, I'm just... You don't... You I'm don't. just giving him a scripture about Israel. He said the book wasn't for Israel. I never said the book wasn't for so Israel. So I would like him to read that. Okay, hold on for a second. Okay, uh, Mike, is, say, Mike is grabbing the scriptures. I, uh, I did not say that the book wasn't for Israel. I, she said this is an Israelite book as though it's only for Israel. That's a problem. It is for Israel. That's the same thing. No, well, well, <laughs> well, if that's what you believe. I would just like you to read that. I, I will read Psalms it. 147, and, 19 and 20. Right, and then. then Thank you. Okay, you. thank you, dear. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. I want you all to catch the rest. Let me let me bring this out here because see, this, this is how apologetics works. Notice that this is the part they miss in Acts chapter in, in Psalms one forty seven. Even though he gave his word to Jacob and his statutes and judgments to Israel. And he didn't deal with any other nation like he did with Israel. They still don't know his judgments. See, that's the part they don't want to read. So, so, but now this was written under the old covenant. Israel, the elect people of God. No one argues that they were the elect people of God, but they rejected the Messiah. They rejected God, as the psalmist is saying here. After God did all that, guess what? They don't know the statutes, and some of them still don't. So let so now let's bring it into our day today. Now, if we bring it to our day today, I'm going to read you another verse. This is why context matters. You can't go to a verse under the old covenant as though something new hasn't transpired. Ephesians chapter number two, I'm sorry, three says this. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, guess what? For you Gentiles. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has been given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Watch verse five, which in other ages, back in the Psalms, was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So Paul is making clear that there is a mystery that has now been given that was not made known, like it is now to the apostles. Now watch verse 6. What is the mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of 
his promise in Christ through the gospel. So what did Christ do? Chapter two talks about he broke down that middle wall of partition and made both groups, Israelites and Gentiles, one body. So now this mystery now that Gentiles are now fellow heirs. I agree that God dealt with Israel like he did not deal with any other nation. But guess what? This is why the progressive revelation is vital. We understand now that even Israel as a nation, not all Israelites, the disciples were Israelites. Most of the early church were Israelites. The day of Pentecost were mostly Israelites. So so no one's knocking the Israelites. What we are saying is that now God, in Acts 15, they made it clear that uh, James said this, he's put no distinction between us and them giving them the Holy Spirit the same way he gave to us. And so we now have one body, right? Same tree, right? The disobedient Israelites were broken off. The obedient, faithful Gentiles were grafted in. It's one body made of both Jew and Gentile. So the whole Israel only stuff, y'all got, if you want to accept the new covenant, you got to get rid of that. Now we're not getting rid of Israel. Absolutely not. God promised he was going to save Israel, but he didn't promise he was going to save Israel only. Now in the one body, we have both Jew and Gentile, Israelite and the uncircumcised in one fellowship, fellow heirs. You cannot argue with the scriptures. Okay, Mike. Um, Double-edged sword, I see you, but just give me one second. There's a train of thought out there where it says that the, the scriptures w- was written for Israelites, by Israelites, about their culture, about their God. Therefore, they should be teaching, just like Paul was an Israelite, and he taught. Well, scripture doesn't say that, number one. Uh, Titus was a Greek who wasn't circumcised and he Mm -hmm. was a bishop. So that's number two. Number three, even when it came to Paul's heritage. Yes, Paul was a proud Israelite. No one is asking Israel to forsake their culture. What we're doing is trying to put culture in in its right perspective. Paul said, I'm an Israelite, circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin, Mm -hmm. a Pharisee of Pharisees. And you know what he went on to say? I count all that but loss that I might gain Christ. Now, did he mean he was uh, giving up his Israelite uh, culture and heritage? Absolutely not. Paul died an Israelite. He was an Israelite through and through, a Hebrew of Hebrews. But what Paul made clear is that Gentiles are now a part of the same body. Right. There's no there's no big eyes and little you. So now the Israelites, now we're we're the Israelites. And, and so we do the teaching. You guys, I mean, you know, you guys are beneath. We have to teach you. That's just wrong. There's no okay. scripture that says that. Show me a scripture that says only Israelites should teach. It's not in there. But people make stuff up. I'm a Bible man. And apologetics means that we have to be able to validate our beliefs in scripture. Folks are validating their beliefs with emotions. And that's all we've been, we've been hearing a lot of emotions today, but we haven't heard a lot of scriptures that declare what they're believing. All right. Area code six, four. Plus Luke, Luke was a Gentile. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, six, four, seven. You are live. Yes, I believe that. Hi. Double-edged yes. sword. Oh. Okay, yes, I'm back on. Can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, it's all right. Go ahead. I'll give you a few seconds. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm hoping it's better. Okay, so that's good that uh, Mike quoted Romans 11. That's good. Where Paul showed that he is an Israelite and not a Christian, like Christian says he is. He didn't say not so a Christian. So let's go. Sorry? He did not say not a Christian. I just I just want to be careful. Let's he's not, not a Christian. He clearly states he's an Israelite. You he, just read it for yourself. Right, but see what you're doing is making a, a equivocation fallacy. You can just because I say it's I'm a black equivoc- man oh. doesn't mean that I'm not a Christian. So yes, Paul was an Israelite, but you can't say, oh, see, he said he's an Israelite, and then you say, so that means now you're interpreting and inserting an opinion. Yes, Paul was an Israelite, but you do not have a scripture where Paul says I am not a Christian. So you cannot say that. I'm just trying to keep you faithful. Hey, can I have a can I have a moment? Yeah, I'm sorry. See, I'm how he's going to say I am not a Christian when he states who he is, first of all. Okay, let's move on from this because I guess we're not going to solve it. Mm-hmm. Let's give me two or three more scriptures so you can see the um, Israelite book. Exodus 3.14. You want to go to that scripture and read it for yourself? Yes, ma'am. I'll go there. Okay, excellent. Exodus 3.14. 3.14. And yes. God said and that's when, Moses, that's when Moses, 
is going on to the children of Israel. Yeah, yeah, this is Moses, no doubt. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Okay. Yeah. Continue. God sent Moses to Israel. I agree. I don't get your point, though. But uh, continue. You know why you can't get my point? And you're not going to get anybody's point until you understand what's going on. It's an Israelite book. You read it to yourself. Years, himself, man. Himself, I, I, um, that's not the Israelite. issue. Revelation talks about the Israelites. Who and argues that? Revelation talks about them. We Who can go to Deuteronomy that? 4. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. Okay. Uh, I'm going there, but I want you to, if you could, who argues that God, listen, I agree with you that God talks about the Israelites. No one argue. I just, if you just heard me, I said, God has not cast away Israel. What he's done is included Gentiles in the one body. What did I say wrong? Yes, he's excellent. And I like the fact that you said he's included Okay, so what's the problem? Yes, he included them. Yes. But they have to also come in and learn from an Israelite. They cannot come Show me that verse. Show me that verse. And teach Israelite. Because Show me that verse. The, okay, let's go to the scripture of Cornelius. I can't remember the exact scripture, but when then Paul went on to Cornelius, uh, not Paul, sorry, Peter. Acts 10. Acts 10. Okay. Right? Peter, no you go to one can come and teach an Israelite but an Israelite. Wait a minute. Does it say that in Acts 10? Does it say that in Acts 10? Because I want to read it. I want to read that. Does it say that in Acts 10? Because I want to go there and read. That's where Paul Peter went Acts to. 10? Okay. Yes. Peter went to um, in in Acts 10. 10. I want to see the verse yes. where it says a Gentile cannot teach an Israelite. I've read Acts 10 probably. Okay. Let me, let me, uh, I don't know if I can clarify this for you, but. Can, can you try you to wrap this up, Double Edged Sword? Sorry. Yeah. Just try to wrap it up in a nice little package. Okay. Okay. So let's wrap it up. I have more scoops you, but I'm going to wrap it up with this. Can you go on to um, going to Italian culture and teach them Italian? We're not teaching Israelite culture. We're teaching scripture. No, 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 no. I'm asking you question. I could if I learned it. Yes. If I learn Italian culture, I could teach Italian code. I listen, I, di I didn't know Greek before, but I'm learning Greek in school. And guess what I can do? I can teach people what I've learned. So, yes, I can teach whatever I learn. I don't oh, tonight, and I like that. You said you have to learn it first, correct? Yes, from someone who knows. So that's the same thing with the Bible. You got to learn it. You got to understand it before you can teach it because clearly you don't know. I agree know with it. that. I agree that you, you do have, have to learn. Facts. You have some facts, but you do not know how to. You don't have the no, spirit. I, I'm just waiting on the that's scriptures. Hands to down, you don't life. have it. You might have the spirit of knowledge, but you don't have the spirit of truth. Just come to learn some of the spirit of truth. I, I want That's the spirit it. of scripture. And, and, and you haven't it's, shown it's me any. Discussion. It don't, it's not an argument. There's a discussion right. to how you feel about the Bible and how the facts are really stated in the Bible. The Simply, facts, I like what you it. said. I, I got to go because all, right. all night. So, Thank you, double-edged sword. I like what she said. Though. Thank she you, double-edged sword. She said the facts that, that the Bible says. I have repeated. Listen, I will repent here on the Unapologetic Rob show tonight. Elder Mike is getting ready to repent. If you can show me the scripture. All right. We got somebody what else on the call. Looking for? We got somebody else on the call. Thank you, Double-Edged Sword. Next caller, 437. You are live with Elder Mike and Unapologetic Rob. Okay, hello. What's your name, sir? My name is Tyrone. Where are you calling from? And I'm calling from Canada. All right. What's on your spirit? Yeah. And speak up just a little louder. Engineer is saying you're a little low. I'm a little low? A little low. I'm going to hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think I know what I've got to do. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me now? Oh, good? Fan. oh, great. Good stuff. Okay, what's on your spirit? I'm good. Sounds you good. good yes, sir. Good. Okay, so this um, debate about Christmas, and I'm listening to the guest who's speaking. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that he's got completely, you know, a thousand percent wrong. Because the, that book that he's clinging on so dearly to read is an Israelite book. <laughs> From the beginning of the book to the end, through the middle, everything. It talks about the children of Israel and their journey throughout their lifetime with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get that clear, first and foremost. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob surnamed Israel. Twelve sons, the children of Israel. No other nation was at that moment grafted in to that point because Israel has been founded, called out, specific, 
that the God of Israel heard the cries of his own people in Egypt land. He didn't hear the cries of anybody else. He heard the cries of his people, so which are the children of Israel. He sent Moses. He sent the prophets. He sent the kings. All of them are relating to the children of Israel, not the people. So when it comes to teaching from that kind of study, even Jesus Christ himself had to even say unto those other prophets, and not other prophets, even unto the chief priests, how is it that you don't understand these sayings? Because the children of Israel has been given the secrets and the mysteries of that book. There's no other people that can come and teach from that book. It's ludicrous to even think that they can. And it's a, it, it a form of arrogance as well, that they feel that I can take this book and teach it. It is an insolent behavior and so on. Now, if you're speaking about being grafting of the Gentiles, you can read that clearly in the book of Romans chapter 11. Do you understand? You can read that from, the, from even verse 11, where it talks about, it says, have they stumbled and fallen? God forbid. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. It's only come Amen. unto the Gentiles to provoke who? Those children of Israel, his own children, to jealousy. That's all. That's all. Now, it also talks about the boasting of the branches that have been grafted in. Don't boast against the branch. Amen. My friend, you sound weird. You, you, you Ty- have to understand Ty- these things. Tyrone. Don't come there. Hold on, I ain't finished. I ain't finished. <laughs> Don't come and boast against the root of, the, of, of where everything that you've got your kind of a knowledge from. Because that's what it sounds like. Now you feel that you can come and teach Israel and teach Israelite doctrine. You're teaching a lie. Because first of all, you have to be circumcised before you can even come and see any other feast of an Israelite. And that's clear. All, for, all the male in Israel were circumcised. And it, you know, it's just, I, don't, I wish I had time to go into the deep scriptures so you can fully understand what it is that's going on. And Christmas... It's stupid. That's got nothing to do with the children of Israel. If you want to go keep Christmas, you go and keep Christmas by yourself. Well done, goodbye, and good luck. But the children of Israel is not given unto them to do so. We do not conform to the customs of heathens. That's their job, right? Jeremiah 10 says for us not to do those things, and it's specific to a tree. If you, don't, if you, if you can't see that, as the Bible says, those who have eyes to see, let them see, and ears to hear, let them hear. You know, we are not blind leaders leading the blind. Do you you understand? And so when you're talking about the scriptures here and about Christmas and the celebration, we don't do those things as Israelites. I'm not talking about any other person that has an adjective to their name before. You want to call yourself, um, I don't know what you call yourself, a Christian apologetic. You should apologize. For sure you should apologize to call yourself a Christian because you're lying. Christianity is never mentioned in the book. Jesus wasn't a Christian. None of the saints, none of the saints, uh, the uh, the saints of that book are Christian. None of the Israelites are Christian, you know. So it's it's something you have to understand that when it comes to that book, Jesus the Christ said, "I have not come but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel." And even then, when he even spoke to the king, that woman, what did he call her? It is not meet to give the pearls to who dogs. He called her a dog, and this is Jesus who is an Israelite, not a Christian. So when you're speaking, it sounds like speaking about a different Jesus, but not the Jesus of this book. It's definitely a Jesus of some other, because I see multiple Jesus out there, but do not reflect anything to do with the Jesus in this book. So it's, it's, it's very, it, you know, I'm, I'm laughing at home, listening to the, the um, fruitless argument here, where it's very clear, as I believe the other two callers try to explain that the book is, a, is an Israelite book. It is an Israelite book, and it's made specifically for the children of Jacob and the children of Israel. If you want to come in, and now you want to be a part of an Israelite, you conform to how an Israelite it is, which is circumstance and so on. If you don't want to, stay away from strang- from bloody and things strangled and so on, as it's, as it's described. And I'm sure you know where that scripture is too. But this is what you have to understand. You cannot come and teach an Israelite. You cannot go. For example, to Buckingham Palace and teach the Queen how she should be for her own home. That's stupid. It's not only stupid, it's actually ridiculous. You cannot come into someone else's home and tell them how to be and say, because I have the manual, I can do it. Let me tell you something, man. There was no other person in there but an Israelite that taught other nations. You don't need convincing. I don't have to show you scripture. It's right there. It's from front to back. Other nations came to learn from Israel. From the Israelites, they, they taught them how to be. And even when they were in Egypt, if you do the research, all nations came and they learned from who? Not Egyptians, from the people that built Egypt. They were Israelites. 430 years, 
our fathers were in that land and made that land prosperous and rich. The history is there. Of, you know, so it's, it's, it's very annoying to, to hear this because I'll just finish off with one more statement, if, if I may please. If you read the book of Amos 3, verse 10, and verse 2, it clearly says who the God of Israel is for. He says, of all the nations and families of this earth, only you have I known, Israel. Therefore, I will chastise you for your iniquities. He don't care about you. If you're not an Israelite, like, he's not really interested. And that's a fact. Oh, I, I like that's it. a fact because he's here for his people and his people alone. From the front, if you read the book of Exodus, it says, speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. Nobody else. So therefore, to speak unto the children of Israel, therefore the children of Israel need to speak to the world of what their father has told them of how to live. You cannot say, I can come and do that, but he didn't speak to you. He spoke unto the children of Israel. He spoke through Moses. He spoke through his prophets, through Joshua, through the priesthood. That's who he spoke to. He said, even in Exodus 19, he, uh, from verse uh, 19 onwards, 18, 19, I bear you on eagle's wings. I will make you a holy people, a, what, a nation oh. of priests. So therefore, my friend, the only pe- if, if I'm a nation of priests and I'm an Israelite, how could you come and teach a priest? All right, Tyrone. Tyrone, Tyrone, don't go nowhere. Just hang on for a second. I want to. I want you I'm to right be there. here Thank to hear you. what uh, Elder Mike has to say. So I'm going right to the scripture because mm-hmm. he, he quoted one scripture, and I'll deal with that one that he quoted. But but there, but that one scripture said nothing about no one else being able to teach an Israelite, and you can't teach if you're not. Not one thing he said was was. <laughs> but but let me read the scripture. Yeah. Acts chapter 10, uh, the dear sister who called in previously to my friend here, uh, quoted or, or referenced Acts 10. Let me read it. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Now, watch verse 35. So my Israel onlys, right? But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Notice what it said. Ness, we're not negating Israel. We're including the other believers with Israel. That's all I'm saying. Now, now, watch what it says. In every nation, whoever fears him. Now, now let me take you to Acts chapter 15, verse number eight. Watch this. Talking about the, uh, let me, uh, verse number eight, talking about the Gentiles. Peter talking. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledge them. Who's the them? The Gentiles. Watch this. Giving them the Holy Spirit. See, people making it about flesh and blood. I'm talking about folks got the Holy Spirit. Giving them the Holy Spirit just (laughs) as he did to us. Notice, they didn't get a lesser Holy Spirit. They didn't get a second class Holy Spirit. They didn't get a Gentile Holy Spirit. They got the Holy Spirit just as he gave to us. Now watch verse 9. Now this is going to upset folks, but it's just the Bible. Verse 9 says, <laughs> and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And so, uh, now, wait, wait a minute, brother. Now, now you are you continue to want to make a distinction that God himself have torn down. That's You're right. building up yep. a partition that God has broken down. I'm here to let you know now that the scriptures, my brother, are the authority. That's what, what I started out saying. That's what I'm going to end up saying. And I've given you mm-hmm. the scripture. And until, until, yep. until you show me the scripture that says Gentiles can't teach the Israelites, then you will mm-hmm. serve expressing mm-hmm. an emotional opinion. Now, mm-hmm. let me deal with the one verse that you talked about. Jesus said, mm-hmm. I have come but for the house of Israel. I agree. No, only. Exactly. Only. That his earthly ministry focused directly. No, no, no. It's period. No, that wasn't no period, because if it was period, then <laughs> we not have said at the end of Matthew, go Who did into, Jesus come to teach? Let me finish, bro. I didn't cut you off. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. I just read in Ephesians chapter 3 that there was a mystery that was not made known to other generations that the Gentiles would be fellow heirs. So, again, that type of thinking, my friend, and I'm not saying you, but it leads 
to a racial divide and racism, actually, and this whole hierarchy. We're higher. We're higher than them and better than them. When God clearly said in Acts chapter 10 that he shows no partiality, but in every nation, those who fears God and works righteousness is accepted. Listen, if you're a white person out there and you're listening to me, if you fear God and work righteousness, you're accepted with God on the same level. You've been made a partaker of the same body. You are a part of the body of Christ. You have the Holy Spirit. And so if you're Chinese out there and you're hearing the gospel and you embrace Christ, guess what? You are now a fellow citizen and a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in life. You don't have to come in a second class citizen and bow down to an Israelite man. There's only one Israelite man I'm bowing down to and his name is Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ, the one who died for me. So what people have to do is get away from their ethnic hierarchy mentality and put Christ where he belongs. He is the preeminent one. If you're saying only one Israelite can teach and his name is Jesus, I'll agree. But don't talk about people who rejected Christ. Those same Israelites that said we have no Caesar. No, I put my faith in Christ, not in any man's ethnicity. All right. Let me let me get to Tyrone. 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 Hi, you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You said something. Are you a Hebrew Israelite? I'm not a Hebrew Israelite, no. I'm an Israelite. Israelite, I've okay. Spoken. Yeah, it's period. It's There's no adjective before or after. All right, uh, just trying to get that. Men in the, men in the were All right. Just, I'm, I'm Israelite. Okay, just getting that clear. Um, now, it's yeah. fair enough you don't celebrate Christmas because this is the topic of the, of the show. Nah, <laughs> that's right. I don't celebrate Christmas. Christmas is a pagan holiday. We all know what... Okay, um, Christmas is, you can dress it up and you can call it what you want. It's Saturnalia. It is a celebration of Satan, if you like, and his feasting times. You know, there is nothing to do with Jesus in there at that time, period, right? And if you are an Israelite, you would, under- you would know that. If you're anything else, please feel free to go and eat your turkey and unclean food and so on and so forth. But it's given on to the children of Israel. These are the feasts that we do not keep. We do not observe these things. And I just, you know, I could be on this line. I could throw out scriptures, one line of scriptures like the uh, gentleman was actually doing. Um, but it's very clear um, in Zechariah 8, chapter 23, you can read it and read from the King James Version. I have to say this. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew or an Israelite. Jews are Israelites, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So you have to understand what that particular scripture means. It means that every other nation, if you want to get to our God and the God of this book, of where this scripture is actually written, you have to go through an Israelite. Even Jesus the Christ said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who was Jesus the Christ? An Israelite. That's what he's saying. So anyway, so Jesus never celebrated Christmas at all. He didn't celebrate those things. He never got the on Passover YouTube. and so on. Well, here he we are. the tabernacle. Sorry? He never got on YouTube either, but here we are. Right? That's an argument. It doesn't matter, man. Time and season, season, my friend. Time right. and season. Exactly. He, never, he, he doesn't exactly. know about Christmas. Christmas is a devilish holiday. If you celebrate that, good luck. And if you're calling yourself a Jew and you're black, that's even worse because, I'm sorry, uh, a Gentile and you're a black man, that's even worse. I don't know know how you even come to that. That's pure confusion because that's a completely different race of people or or, 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 or or part of people, I should say. But this is what I'm trying to say right here. And what I'm saying here is this is very clear. This book has been given to those who understand. And those who understand are only Israelites children of Obviously. Israel, because why it's been given to us to teach that. And I just read a scripture there, and again, Jesus the Christ didn't put everything out plainly for everybody yet to read. You know why? Because they'll have people just like this guy here who'll be misinterpreting things and trying to use it because it comforts and it pleases their heart. How could you get the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is with Israel. Because if you read Romans, Romans chapter 9, do you understand? Who's been given the law? Who's been given the promises? Who's been given the spirit, even the spirit of adoption? It speaks about Israel. I can go into many scriptures I, I, here and just obliterate everything that's been said. And you have to understand, Paul even himself is speaking as an Israelite. He's not speaking as a Christian. He's not speaking about anything else. He's teaching those, those people to come. If you want to be an Israelite, 
you have to come by way of an Israelite. If you want to serve the God of this book, you can go and call him Yeshua and all these fools and these names that are made up. You know, that's, that's Hebrew Israelite. You need to do the study on that of um, Elia ben um, Ahuda, Yehuda, who made up the whole thing. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's pitiful. I, I, I got a the, question. The obliteration of this book and the confusion of people. And I, it's, it's sickening. Try to, try to teach me or an Israelite or Israelites about this book. He's actually leading right. them to hell. Tyrone, I got a question. Yeah. And Elder Mike, I got a question for both of you guys. Yeah. Uh, nice. Now, there's a caller, 313. I'll get to you in a few minutes. Um, in Acts, it says something about being righteousness or being righteous. To mm -hmm. learn to be righteous. And where, is, where is he reading from? Uh, we just read that earlier. I think Mike read it. Uh, in Acts, I, I, I Acts chapter number 10. Was, 10. Whoever, it says something about being where? righteous. Whoever feared I, I, him and where? righteousness is accepted by him. I can't, I can't hear that. Say Acts I, chapter what? Acts 10 verse 35. But in every nation, in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Work. Yes. Okay, so my question to both of you guys, what is that righteousness? So I'm going to go to Elder Mike, <laughs> okay. then Tyrone, okay. if you could answer that. What is this righteousness no that is talking about here? How do you get righteousness? Okay, uh, Romans chapter number five clearly tells us how we get righteous. Notice what it says here in Romans 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So our justification, which is the legal term where we have been declared righteous, which is what he talked about. Abraham believed God and it was a, his belief, his faith, it was counted unto him for righteousness. So that's step one in working, being uh, having righteousness attributed to us, not by our outward works, but through faith in Christ. Secondarily, though, uh, according to Paul in, in Ephesians chapter number two, he says this, for by grace you have been saved through faith that not of yourselves, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then he goes on to say that we have been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So now that we've been declared righteous through faith in Christ, we ultimately now will produce the fruit of righteousness. What are those? That is being led by the spirit. Paul mentions in uh, Galatians chapter five, that the fruit of the spirit is this love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith. He says without such, he says there is no law, right? But then he lists 17 different works of the flesh from idolatry to adultery and sorcery and the such where he talks about people who are not being led by the spirit. So a true born again believer is only made righteous through faith in Christ. And subsequently, therefore, his lifestyle now exhibits a godly life being led by the spirit as a born again believer. It's not his works that makes him righteous, but it's his faith that God counts as righteousness. But okay. subsequently, he lives yes. righteously through this being led by the spirit of God. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so uh, I listened to the uh, the guy and um, the uh, gentleman there, and he didn't actually tell me exactly what righteousness was, um, and so on. And the fruits of the spirit, if you read that clearly, is how you actually treat one another. One another being your neighbor, mean brethren. Brethren is or your neighbor is the person who serves the same God as you. And in coming to the the, the question about righteousness in that acts. 10 verse 35. Now, let's go back because you see, you start way at the back of the book, but you're going to start at the beginning. If you read even in the even, um, Exodus 19, now Exodus 19 is what is popularly known as the Ten Commandments. Who were those Ten Commandments given to? The Ten Commandments was not given to the world, it was given unto the children of Israel after they had come out of Egypt. Everything was given, the laws, everything was given. The way how to be was given to the children of Israel. That's where it started. If that didn't happen, there'll be no Paul and so on and so forth. He had to even get all of his information from what happened with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even Moses. He even says that even in the book of Acts. 
He clearly says that. Now, if we're talking about righteousness, what is righteousness? Well, let's, well, let's start there. Righteousness is being obedient to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That's what it is. Obedient to him. Now, if you cannot be obedient to him, then you are not living righteously. Now, let me read this for you. In Romans chapter 9, it says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. That means the minute he is mentioned, the Christ, he cannot lie. Everything now that proceeds out of Paul's mouth is the truth. And if you don't believe it, let me read it for you. It says, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. He cannot lie. Everything that is coming now, it is the truth from his conscience. Therefore, anybody try to mix it up, it's on them and not him. Verse 2, it says that I had great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could have wished myself were occurred from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh that look like me. Who are they? Who are Israelites? Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law. That's teaching the law. You understand? Teaching how we teach the law. We give you how or show you the way how to live according to the law. So when you're saying that no one's taught you or no one's shown you, only Israelites, I'm reading it right now. Really? Okay, here we go. I, I, I ain't done yet. Then the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the services or the service of God and the promise. Do you, do you understand? That's everything. That means the giving, the teaching, how we teach the law unto all those that will come, even unto the Gentiles that shall be grafted in or engrafted in. We teach them how to do it. We give them the law and show them how they ought to do the services. The service, what services do you keep unto our God? And the promises, everything that proceeds after that, thou, you are an Israelite, you gave the promises. It says, who are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. So Christ came for his own, right there. He came for who? The Israelites. Our fathers, because that was already pre I was promised and ordained to be so. Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. I'm going to stop there because that says absolutely everything I need to say about righteousness. If you want to be able to serve this God and live righteously, all the laws, the laws that have been given unto the children of Israel. You keep them, but you must go through an issue like because Paul himself has just declared that the laws and the giving of the law, the services, the promises, and also the spirit has been given unto Israel. No other nation. You can have uh, an adopted spirit because there's plenty of those going around. You can have a familiar spirit. That's plenty of those going around. But as for this book and this spirit are the spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit is with Israel. So when you talk about righteousness, in order to be righteous, you must first learn obedience to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't tell me about anything else, because even Jesus the Christ prayed to his Father in heaven. So if he prayed to his Father in heaven, right, how is it now, therefore, you want to now completely, because you celebrate Christmas, you want to X out the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and just run with your own doctrine. It's a personal doctrine. Nothing to do with this book. It is a misleading of lies. And even in, even, even in, in, um, in courts of law, with, script, with any law that is written down, they can take pieces and segments of that statement, put it together as if it's one law. That's what these people do. They do not read it exactly as it is written. And that's the problem. So righteousness is being obedient to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. As he stated in Exodus 3, verse 15, he said, that is my name forever and the memorial unto all generations. So when we pray because Jesus the Christ came, yeah, we pray in the name of the Christ to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, period. There's nothing else to add, nothing else to, 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 to take away, because he's already stated that in order to serve our God, you must come by an Israelite. Zechariah, I just read it, 8 and 23. You have to hold on to the cloak of a Jew and say that I will go with you. That is an Israelite. You cannot come by. Jesus the Christ said it numerous times. 
No man cometh to the Father but by me. Who is me? Is Jesus the Christ on earth? No. But who is on earth? His representatives, his people. So it's not about color, my friend. Not about color. Because I can go through the whole scriptures and show you where there was a mixed multitude that left Egypt, as you may have read or may not have read, a mixed multitude that left with Egypt. You understand? The Queen of Sheba, and so on. So therefore, it's not about that. It is about now, who will you serve? Who will you serve? And especially in Romans, because uh, Romans 11, where the Israelites now had to be moved to jealousy. Because why? They returned from their father. That doesn't mean he didn't cast us away. It says, God forbid, has he, has he cast us away? No. Romans 11 opens that and says that. He will never do that because the covenant has been made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever. It doesn't matter how bad your son is, my friend. You will never cast him away. You have a son that is wicked and evil. That son is your son. You will chastise him. You will do everything you have to do, but he is your son. He, the inheritance will be with him. So how much then, our father? You think you got this from just you knew? It came from him. So therefore, in order to understand these scriptures, you have to go to an Israelite. We can go around for days, weeks, and years on this. It's going to come back to the same thing. You have to come by an Israelite. You cannot call yourself something else and think to yourself, you're going to enter in. You want to enter in through the back door or some other way? It says you're a thief. Okay. You know that scripture too. You cannot come in another way because that's what these apologetic Christians and all these these philosophies do. They come in other ways and you're trying to get through, but you are, it says you're a thief. You must come in through the straight door and the way to come in through the direct is by an Israelite. Wow. The Canaanite woman fell before the feet of Jesus. She didn't go to anybody else. She fell before his feet. He who she fell before, an Israelite. She, she fell before Jesus' feet because he is the door, not because Israel is the door. Brother, you air great. Israel the door. Now, listen, Romans chapter nine that you read so beautifully, you stopped short verse six. But it is not as though the word of God has taken no re- effect for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Brother, you don't understand that scripture, my friend. Uh, truly, I understand it, but hold on. Give me a minute. Uh, he, okay. he clearly makes it known. Matter of fact, the reason I agree with you. See, you all think because you go to a verse that talks about God's love for Israel, that you're that, that you've proven something when I have already told you and acknowledged that. Yes, all I'm telling you is that Gentiles were added into the same body and given the same promises. I've done nothing but quote scripture. But watch this. But you both it against wait, the branch. You don't both. Wait, 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 bro. Okay, the ahead, reason ahead, why ahead. Paul was grieved is because Israel wasn't saved. This is why he's grieved because because the promises were made to them and given to them, right? The laws, the commandments, all the things you read. But guess what? They still weren't saved. All you got to do is read all the way down to Romans chapter number nine. What shall we say? In verse 30 in chapter 9, he says, what shall we then say? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. Verse 31, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to righteousness because she sought it as it were the works of the law. They stumbled at that stumbling stone. So the reason Paul is, Paul isn't trying to say, hey, did y'all Israelites, y'all been given this. Y'all the one supposed to teach. No, Paul is saying, I'm so hurt. Man, Israel was given these laws, these promises, and these brothers still ain't saved. They still don't get it. They still think that they're going to be made righteous by their outward works. They're not saved. But guess what? These Gentiles who did not have the law have obtained righteousness. In, in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 29, Paul makes it clear. I'll read this last verse. I'll shut up. And, you know, because I know we got other callers here. But Romans chapter 3, verse 29, it's clear. All this Israel only stuff got to go. Right? Watch what Paul says here. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. (laughs) Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. So I agree with you, my brother. God loves Israel and has not cast them away in terms of as a nation. There are Israelites. The apostles were Israelites. They are being saved. Not all Israelites. Some of them are going to be in hell along with all the unbelieving Gentiles. But along with believing Israelites, I'm not against what you're saying. I'm just telling you you're stopping short of including 
the mystery that the Gentiles are fellow heirs of the same wow. promises. And unfortunately, you oh said all of that and you end it with this. That's why you got to come through. See, this is what, the, the, let me show you this. The, the danger in that doctrine is this. The danger in that doctrine is this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You turned around and said, you got to come through Israel. Where did Jesus yes, because he's an Israelite. Jesus never said, Jesus was the son of God. He said, I am the way, not we. He didn't say we are the way. He said, I, I, that's a personal pronoun. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man comes to the father but by me, not but by I'm, Okay. I, I, got, I got a question, guys. I am the way. I got a question, guys. I got a question. I got to I got to answer that one because that 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 one there is uh, that's that's like um I'll give you I'll give you uh, I'll give you 10 uh, seconds to answer the question. Um, answer right there. <laughs> when he says I am the way, what did Jesus do? He did everything the way in how it ought to do mm -hmm. and how it ought to be. He showed Israel this is how you do it. What you are doing is wrong. I am going to show you my people. I come down for you, and I am going to show you how to do it. Not the chief priests, not the Herodians, not the Sadducees, not the scribes' way, not your own way, not, not you know, leaning onto your own understanding. This is the way, the truth. I am the way, how you do it. This, I am the truth, I am the life. You cannot come by uh, the God of Israel, my father, unless you come by this way. He spoke parably. Now, I need, to, I, need to, I need to just obliterate this one time. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 21. Because, you see, I know we're on a radio station and we push for time. It says, they have moved me to jealousy with that that is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Who's that? The Gentiles. A foolish nation. Right? And then, and then we go to Romans 10. And Romans 10, 19 to 21, it says, But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are not, that are, that are no people, and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. By this, it was very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them, them that are not after me. But to Israel, he said, all the day I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and so gainsaying people. Yeah. Doesn't mean he threw them away. I didn't he just say proved that. it. It was already said, hold on, from Deuteronomy, what he was going to do. So Israel already knew. So that's why it came to fruition now in Romans 10, because of their disobedience. Disobedience doesn't mean that now you're Gentiles, now you're going to be the same. Don't boast against the branch. You cannot boast against the branch because you were grafted in. The root, the foundation is always going to remain Israel. If you do that, you'll be broken up and you'll be put outside. It's as simple as that. There is no, there's no, there's no argument. So no only Ty Tyrone? Tyrone? Tyrone, no, I'm here. You Jesus hear me? Christ has said, I am the brand. My father is the husbandman, right? So Jesus is the root, not you. Not you, my brother. I'm All right. a black man. Uh, I'm All right. You know, I'm an Israelite. I'm not the root. Uh, I'm not the you're not, you're not, not an Israelite. Israelite okay, guys. Nobody's going to you're heaven through me. I, I, yeah, I, okay. And plus, you're not going to heaven. I am a seed <laughs> of not, Abraham through faith, Galatians chapter 3. And that's all that's you're necessary. Not going, my friend, you're not going to heaven either. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you another don't point. have the keys, bro. I'm so glad you don't well, have the you're keys. You're not going because, <laughs> listen, listen, I'm saying this on John 3, verse 13 says, if you've not no, come from there, the you cannot go there. Kingdom of heaven is not heaven. Jesus the Christ said to the, to the thief, today you'll be me in paradise. That is not heaven, mate. Understand the scriptures. Don't fool people with this false philosophy and doctrine of the devil, because that's what you're doing. Understand what you're reading. Because All right. you're leading people's souls in a bad way, and your own one is going to suffer because of God's right. reveal to you oh, Okay, guys. From you to enemy. Okay, right. guys, hang on, hang you on. Know, you don't know what you're dealing with, man. Hang you're on, guys. With spiritual people here. Israel is the way. Show me that verse. Hang on, guys. Listen. Israel is the way, my friend. <laughs> Amos 3, verse 2. <laughs> we, we got other calls. Israel. Hang on. No man unto father but by an Israelite. You listen, Ooh, Paul taught just, the Gentiles. The Gentiles just replaced came to the Jews. Israelite. The Israelite. Paul taught the that is Paris. All right. Paul taught the Gentiles. The Gentiles. Tyrone. Israel. They right. became Israel or, or part Mr. of an Israelite culture. They were not Israelite. Mr. Paul Tyrone. Mr. Tyrone. Mr. Tyrone, you there? Tyrone. I got you, man. I got you. Are you there, Tyrone? I'm here. I'm here. Okay, don't go nowhere. I'm going to grab another caller. I'm good. 
Don't go nowhere. You. Is it your I bedtime? Got, I got bedtime. I got loads of time. Okay, don't go nowhere. Let me grab another caller. Okay. This person's been waiting yeah. for a long time. 313, you're on the air. 313. Hello? Yes, hello? Hi, what's your name, sir? Uh, Chris. Chris. Chris, where are you calling from, Chris? From uh, Fraser, Michigan. Thank you for holding forever. Yeah. Man, yeah. I am so sorry. <laughs> These guys were back. I couldn't, I couldn't jump in there. There's no break. But well, anyways, what's on your spirit, okay. sir? Um, I, I, did, I just wanted to say I heard a lot of conversation about the Jew. I know, I know this subject is, is Christmas. But yeah, you know I, how it I, goes. I'm going to touch on that uh, too. All right. Uh, I, I wanted to read a passage of scripture because I think what I'm what I'm seeing is Israelite worship, which is idolatry in itself. Um, verse in Romans chapter uh, four, verse nine, it says, "This is considered. This is about Abraham." It says, "Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only?" or upon the uncircumcised also. For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Preach. Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. So that takes away all this emphasis on the law. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness, of faith, which he, and while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but of also, but but also, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And if we, if we and, and, and I noticed that the gentleman before you spoke, he put a lot of emphasis on, and he actually changed the scripture when he said that, that it, it's through Israel, uh, 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 but it's not. Jesus said it in, to his disciples in Luke 24, 44, he said, and this it says this, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and of the prophets and of the Psalms. That's the entire Old Testament concerning me. The focus has always been before the law on Christ. And we have to understand, he said Jesus was a Jew. Before Jesus was a Jew, the Jew, it was just the flesh he was in. Before he was a Jew, he was uh, the, he was the son of God. He was creator. So it's, it's, it's beyond being a Jew. He, they were, the, being, the Jewish body, the Jews and the Israelites were servants, just like we're servants. They served their purpose. They're not the door to righteousness. They're not the door to heaven. Preach. Jesus is the door. He always has been and always will be. All right. Thank you, Mike. I mean, uh, thank you, Chris. Appreciate you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris. Now, uh, yep. thank you, sir. Mike and Tyrone, yep. I'm going to have you guys respond, but wait. I'm going to grab another caller. We, we, we just, uh, the board here is full, so let me just try to clear the board. I'm going to go to area code 416. 416, you are live with Unapologetic Rob, with Elder Mike and Tyrone. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny Live Love Lab. How are you? Hmm? Can you speak up? Uh, no. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay. Hold on a sec. No problem. Can you hear me now? Yes. Who's this? What's your name? It's Jenny Live Love Laugh. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Calling from Toronto. Okay. What's on your spirit? So, okay. So I just wanted to talk quickly about um, just the Christmas tree again, uh, what we were talking about originally. So I just wanted everybody to go to Ezekiel 31 if they can. And if we can just, uh, just quickly, I just wanted to read starting from three, 
where it says, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in, in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of high stature. And his top was among the thick bows. The water made him great. The deep set him up on the high with his rivers running around, sorry, running round about his plant and sent out her little rivers onto all the trees of the field. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bowls were multiplied. And his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. And it goes on uh, talking, and then I just wanted to mention, um, where does it go? Okay. Uh, Thus was he fair in the greatness and the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. So it talks about the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. So it shows that he was in the garden from that time. So we were just talking about um, how the tree is related to Lucifer, Satan, whatever, um, and how it goes back to uh, the, ba- the Babylonian times and the worshiping of their gods. So basically, um, if you guys notice, that every major city has a Rex of Christmas tree around this time, right? We have the songs that say, oh, Christmas tree. So what you guys need to see is the power okay. of this tree. You know, every single year for how many years, 30, 40, 50, 60, how many years they have to erect this tree because it's the power. You know what I mean? So now when you're bringing this into your house and you're bowing down to it by picking up your presents and you're bowing down to it. And it, 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 it seems so simple. Like you're just, okay, we're just getting our tree, but it's just the significance of what we're doing when we're bowing down to the tree. And yes, Jeremiah 10 does talk about the tree it's not talking about you know taking the tree and cutting it up and making idols and stuff like that it's talking about the tree and decking it with silver and gold because it's a custom that they used to do it wasn't called christmas it was their custom that they did and it continued to now what we call christmas through rome through all of these things and it became it became the custom of the world you know what i mean like we're talking about christmas and jesus and whatever, but we have, like, Muslims, we have Hindus, we have everybody celebrating Christmas. You know what I mean? This is the spirit, the spirit of Lucifer. It's it's the strength that he he gathers around this time in the dark season. So, anyways, I just wanted to kind of mention that I'm at work right now, but um, I just wanted to bring up that that scripture in Ezekiel 31. Just take a, a moment to read it, just to show that the tree is not necessarily talking about a tree, but it's talking about an entity, a person, a spirit. Okay, okay? so that's what I, wa- I wanted to show you, that the tree is not just like a tree that's outside. It, okay. it has more meaning to it. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, caller. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, caller. Okay. Thank Take you. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Elder Mike and Tyrone, I will give you a chance mm-hmm. to respond to all these questions. I want to take one more caller, okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. 770, you are live, of course, with... Elder Mike, Tyrone, and myself. Hello, caller. Hey, hey Rob, how you doing? This is this is Larry again. I, I had to call back. Yes, Larry. Uh, it looks like your um my hands is full and evolved, <laughs> 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 but but it's okay. Um, so just just the previous uh, caller, I, I want to address something right quick. Okay. Before I, I move to uh, what Tyrone was talking about. But um, and I think Mike did mention this already. You can't accidentally worship anything. It's it's something that's done deliberately. Okay, so just bending down to, to pick up a, a a gift from up under a tree doesn't mean that you're worshiping uh, the tree. Anybody that worships anything other than God is, is is idolatry. And people who put a Christmas tree in their house aren't worshiping the tree. That's just not true. Okay. I mean, it's, that's just that's just a lie. But um, anyway, moving to uh, a man, Tyrone. So, so Larry, can Canada, I ask you a question, Larry? Um, Larry, yeah. can, I, can I ask you a question? Even if the origins is not biblical, if it even if the origins comes from somewhere else, does that matter? No, it doesn't matter okay. because we do things that are not biblical all the time. Okay. And 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 that's and that's not that doesn't make us see. God judges your heart. You know, you you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. All right, and it's something that's that's done deliberately, and you have to have a covenant with God. 
Now, the covenant is not the law of Moses anymore. The covenant is Jesus Christ now. <laughs> now, he's the, it's by his blood, the new covenant. Mm. All right? And you have the Holy Spirit. So someone that has the Holy Spirit, the Spirit won't allow them to worship. The, the Spirit will convict them uh, of that. Okay? So, I mean, I just, I, I, I don't get on what these people are reading. I don't get mm. that. I guess they don't really understand you know, Christian doctrine. They don't understand anything about the Holy Spirit. No, that's God's Spirit living with you. How can you have God's Spirit and, and, and it does not convict you if, if you're doing, if you're worshiping, if you're participating in idolatry? It just, it, it won't work. It just, it just won't work. Um, anyway, l let me read this right quick um, with this Israel only. Uh, uh, it's garbage. It, it really is garbage. Um, so you, we, we, we go to John. Let's go to John. J John chapter 1. And I'm just going to start reading here. I think this is verse uh, uh, 6. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Um, it says, This man came uh, for a witness to, to, I'm sorry, to bear witness of the light. And the light is, is capital. So we know that the light is, is God, is, is actually Christ. That he's talking talking about it says that that all uh through him might believe that's that word again believe um he was not the light but was sent to bear witness to the light okay now this is key right here it says it says that was the true light which gives light to every man coming uh, into the world every man coming into the world not just the israelites it says he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own. Who was his own? His own is Israel. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Okay? Now, here we go. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right yeah, to become right. children of God, to those who believed that's how you get your righteousness, by believing in him, in his name. Okay, now here we go, uh, Brother Tyrone. Listen very carefully to this. I'm read it slow. It says, who were born not of blood, Preach. nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of men, but of God. Okay? That totally destroys your, your doctrine yeah, about man. Israel only. You got Israel to come only. through Christ. You got to come through God, through your belief, through your faith in Him. <laughs> all right, for what He did on that on that cross. Period. Period. The structure that read the writ, read it again. It says not a blood. Okay, so you know we don't go to 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 Israelites to, to, in order to get to God. And yes, you did butcher that scripture when He said that He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by Me, Preach. not Israel, <laughs> by Me." Talking about Christ, you are, uh, you are, uh, I mean, I, I don't, look, man, I, I love you because, yeah, man, because you're a brother, man. you know, I love yeah. you, but, 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 but you're in, in heresy. You, you're outside yeah. of what's written in the word. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and the solidify this in, I, I go to this coming out of Jesus mouth himself. Okay. Uh, we go to Matthew chapter eight. All right, and I'm gonna I'm going to just just paraphrase some of it because I don't want to read the whole chapter. Yes. Uh, but chapter eight, he um, he healed the centurion. All right, the centurion was not an Israelite. This guy was not an Israelite. He now he didn't heal the centurion. He healed his his servant. He healed the servant, and Christ commended him uh, because of his belief. He said he says not. He marveled by the man's belief by his faith. He says not in all Israel has has, has he seen this. All right, so that means that this man was not a part of Israel. But here is key. All right, here's the key key verse here. It says that um, I, I go ahead when he said when he marveled, said when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to those who, who who followed, he said, "Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel." Okay, this man was an Israelite. He says, "And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west." And will sit down, um, sit down uh, with, with both. I'm sorry. Will sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. He Jesus. says. He says. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. They will be cast out because they don't believe. 
and they're putting they're putting their their faith in their blood and in their ethnicity. All right, you won't be saved. You won't be made righteous by 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 depending upon your Israelite heritage. That will not get you into the kingdom. The only thing that's going to get you into the kingdom is belief in Jesus Christ. And that and that's that script. I can't straight scripture with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for calling back. You're welcome. Uh, okay, I'm going to go... F um, let's go to Tyrone, then uh, Elder Mike can close off. Tyrone, you heard a lot of... Hello? Uh, yes. Hello? Yes, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of stuff that's been, you know, again, spun. And um, what the, the last call, I don't know, his name's Larry or whatever he is saying. And, um, it's, it's, it's a spin. It's an old Christian spin. Um, where they just preach love and love and love and love, just like what they did in the days of slavery, where they indoctrinated the children of slavery, but, you know, with all kinds of foolishness. They painted the picture of white Jesus, called themselves Gentiles, gave them a different Bible and a book to read, and a different kind of understanding. And they passed it down to generations, to generations and generations, 400 years to be in fact of that indoctrination. I understand why Larry and the, um, the um, other gentlemen on the phone are so convinced in what they're speaking about. It's an indoctrination. It's, that it's now become who they are. And they, and they need to read the Willie Lynch letter and what he did and what he said, why he was the most successful slave master in the Caribbean. Then they'll start to understand why they're believing such falsities. So in Can I ask you a question, Ty Tyrone? Who, who we are as... Huh? Can I ask you a question, Tyrone? Yeah. Is yeah. the scripture just for Israel? Is that what you're saying? Or is it open to anybody yeah. else? No, no, no. I'm not, the, the scripture is written by Israelites for Israelites and about Israelites. Now, okay. if you want to understand that book without being so confused, like some of the others are speaking, you need to go to an Israelite. They're saying about the Spirit and Jesus, but who was Jesus speaking to? This is what we have to understand. Who was Jesus the Christ speaking to? He spoke to his 12 and his and the disciples that followed him, right? Jesus. He was an Israelite. He 12. So Israelites. So oh, sorry, eleven Israelites and one was a Canaanite. Just 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 to show and to fulfill the word of grace. But then we want to get into that because that's above their head. You have to understand. Not all of the twelve were all Israelites. One was a Canaanite because it was showing them more things to come. Okay? You have to understand that. Now, when he's now speaking because now they, 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 they seem to understand that, uh, number one, that they're going to heaven and all this stuff. But if, if you read Luke 16, it's very clear. It is so clear there, right? When there was the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man and Lazarus, both of whom were Israelites. Let's make that clear. There wasn't a Gentile and an Israelite. They both were Israelites. And one ended up in hell, and, the other end, and Lazarus ended up in Abraham's bosom. Now, what did he say? He said, let me go back and tell them what they were doing is wrong. No. He said, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, they won't hear you. So again, who is he speaking to? An Israelite. Who is he? It's all relating to Israel. It's simple. I know people are going to find it hard in their heart to believe that. That's good luck to them. It's a bitter pill for them to swallow because they're so, it's, it's, in, it's, it's indoctrinated within them to be accustomed with the light. It's so nice. I mean, Larry, who the last call was talking about the Christmas tree. Now, the Christmas tree is evil. It's simple, right? Jesus never celebrated a Christmas tree. Did he see him put up a tree and sit down with gifts with all the children? Did you see him do that? No. Did you see any of the people in the Bible do that? No. Did Paul do that? No. They knew not to do that because they were Israel. It was a heathen tradition. It was a tradition, it was, it was a tradition that was not of the children of Israel. And Jeremiah and even the, it was, it was saying, do not do these. Do not do like the heathens do. So if he's saying the heathens who are not Israel, then who is he speaking to? The Israelites. So let me ask Again, you a question. I don't know why they need a specific question, that's a specific verse that says only Israel. The whole book is Israel. The whole book is teaching Israel. Ty okay. Tyrone. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I got a question, Tyrone. My background okay. is Portuguese, right? So where do I fit right. in all this that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Where do I fit you in? Are, listen, you're, you're Portuguese, right? Yes. If you now go and, you, like you said, you hold on to the cloak of an Israelite and said, I will go with you. I believe your God. Your God will be my God. And you come from your background and you now follow the way of an Israelite. You are an Israelite. You're circumcised like an Israelite. You do the customs of an Israelite. You are an Israelite. You do everything as how we do. You're an Israelite. The skin color doesn't matter. So I don't know why these guys are clinging on to all this stuff and saying this. That I have no understanding. You have to understand that. 
Right? Let's, 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 let's just make that clear. Now, our God will do exactly as he feels and pleases, but he will not forsake his children. Because when we read the first scripture in Romans 11 and throughout, it says, has God cast away his people? That's a question. Okay, so, I, got, I got another question for you. No. I got another question. Before we go to Elder Mike, um, in the scripture, the Gentiles that Paul taught, they, they didn't have to get circumcised. They just had to ref- no, refrain didn't. from right. strangled right. meat and blood and things like that. That's right. That's so right. What, what's the difference between those Gentiles and you saying that I could come in and get circumcised and, and do all these things? It seems like there's the a difference. Is, is that, the, the difference is that 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 moment, at that time, the council had to make a decision what was about to take place. So now those these specific ones who at the time it was unlawful for gen for Gentiles and 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 Israel or Jews to be mixing together. So okay, if you believe in our God, this is what we will this is what you do. It was a decision made by the council, the Israelite council, my I say, at that time, if you read very, very carefully, like with Paul, very carefully, that they were all they had to do was abstain from bloody things and being strangled for that time. You have to understand the timing is critical for everything. Now, if they now say they want to be Israel and they circumcise themselves because you can't sit the Passover unless you're circumcised, and you can go way back in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, that says that, and they circumcise themselves and they want to now become and do it as we do, then there's no difference between them and us. Okay. They are now become an Israelite. So they now become part or grafted in, as you were, of the inheritance, the giving of the Lord, the promises, everything, as an Israelite. That's the wisdom of our God. That is the wisdom of our God and the God of that book. I don't know who the, which other God these guys are calling on, but it's not the God of this book. So he made it clear. You have to understand, Paul was going through something. He was given a job to do. He exalted his own office. So therefore, he had to come up with things to look good in front of these Gentiles. Gentiles meaning they were not of thy people, Israel. Right? Israel can never, ever be forsaken. It doesn't matter if they don't want to believe. I don't really care. Because it even speaks about, even in the book of Isaiah, about a very small remnant. A small remnant. So we don't, I, I'm grateful when they don't hear about the true living God, because you are barely fulfilling what he said. That not all will hear. Not all will hear. Okay. This is the truth. Okay. They uh, cannot. They can. That's why they come up with their own, their own stories and make themselves feel good. And, and you know, and misinterpret, missing or interpret me to lie with the scripture, lie about it. I haven't heard no one go right back to the beginning and speak about Moses and what he said, because they can't. They, how could you read a book from the middle of the book or the end of the book? Uh, and again, Thinking about that, I've got to, I have to say this. When it comes down to the end of days, I know I'm going to be going a bit fast here for some of the people, but I've got to say this. There's 12 gates you've got to go through. There are 12 gates. Do they, do they know what these 12 gates are? Can they wander in through the 12 gates with the uncircumcised self, poor keys eating self? You can't do that because it's very specific to the children of Israel. 12 gates you've got to go through. And again, that's pearls. I'm, I'm not going to be handing it out so easy. But there's 12 gates, and they're symbol of, of the children of Israel. And you tell me, Anybody that doesn't call themselves an Israel, I understand that it's a secret with a password to get through. How are you going to walk in through those gates? Okay. The okay. elder, something said that he's going to heaven. How? All right. John, 3, uh, John 3, verse 13 says, he's he who's not ascended up this to heaven, you um, um, descended from heaven. You're not going to heaven. You cannot go to heaven. And that's a, and again, that's a lie. It's an old Christian Pentecostal Baptist lie that the slave martyrs taught the children of slavery. You're okay. not going to heaven. Okay, Tyrone. After death is judgment. All right, Tyrone. Don't go nowhere, Tyrone. Don't go nowhere. I, I have a, a quick question for both of you, but I want Elder Mike to uh, start this off first. Then we're going to go to uh, who's on next? 414? Fine, too, to some of the others. Not, not yet. Uh, pardon me, Mike? I was saying, too, uh, I want to be able to respond. Oh, you will. You will. You okay. will. I just want to start off with, an, with, a, with a different question. Sure, no so problem. when Paul ta- taught the Gentiles, were the Gentiles allowed to keep their, their old tradition in worshiping their gods and idols, or did they have to throw that away and start worshiping the true and living God? We'll start with that, uh, Mike, and then you could go on uh, and try to, try to answer the other questions that were uh, presented to you. Right. They had to, of course, put away their idols. Mm-hmm. That was 
that's actually in the text. Okay. Of idols. They were former idolaters, but they did not. Th there were customs that they yet continued that had nothing to do with idolatry, which is why, why would Peter feel uncomfortable sitting at the table with these Gentiles if they were acting just like Jews? No, these were Gentiles. This is why Peter got up from the table because he was still stuck in his customs, right? And, and Paul had to correct him. So, so here's the thing, my friend. Yes, they had to give up their idols, but they didn't have to give up their being a Gentile because that's why they didn't have, see, giving up circumcision, then they're giving up being a Gentile. That was the mark of circumcision. And, and, and so my, my, my friend Tyrone, you've contradicted scripture. You're saying, well, you know, the council made a decision for that time. It doesn't say that. There's nowhere in Acts 15 where it says this is temporary. It, it, there's nowhere in the Bible. And, and notice all the callers that came in. Chris came on here. Mike called on. All these brothers have to do is read. We don't have to say, and this must mean, and see, you need this special revelation that only comes through one of us. No, all we got to do is read. God spent over 2,000 years, and he anointed holy men full of the Holy Spirit to give us, his, not all, Luke wasn't an Israelite, thank you. But anyway, he, 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 he gave <laughs> us all the scriptures that we might grow. So he didn't say, Mike, now listen to all the apostles and Tyrone. No, brother, no. Listen, he's contradicted scripture. Let me, let me finish, brother, brother, let me finish. Talk for a while. All right. So he said for he, the brother said for that time. No, God. So so he's saying God only allowed non Israelites to be accepted for a season. So there was a he's acknowledging. OK, yeah, for that season, you ain't have to be circumcised. You didn't have to become a Jew just for that season. Not what God is not a wishy washy God. He's not saving Gentiles differently than Jew. And now those Gentiles, they didn't have to. But these Gentiles, they do have to. Brother, let me tell you where you fit in, uh, Rob. You fit in as a fellow mm -hmm. here, a born again believer, not a second class to nobody. If you grab on to Christ, you do not have to grab onto any ethnic man. You are not a second class citizen. You are a fellow heir according to the scriptures. Now, you do not have to become an Israelite. Paul, he said Paul had to make himself look good to the Gentile, if I heard him correctly. I'm like, what? Are you kidding? Paul was sold out for the truth. Paul wasn't just trying to look good before no Gentile. Paul was concerned about serving Jesus Christ. Christ. The reason no one's hearing the, that doctrine is not because we're not Israelite, not coming through the nation of Israel, and, and Israel is the way, the truth, and the life, which no scripture says. It's because you're not talking Bible. That's why we're not accepting what you said. Now, you want me to start with the book? Abraham. And, and Chris called in and read this scripture so powerfully. He was justified before circumcision. The promise of faith was before for the law. The law was temporary, guided us until faith in Christ would come. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. And the promise, according to Galatians, that was given to Abraham was that a promise that in him, who? The Abraham being the father of faith, all nations of the world will be blessed. He didn't say to seeds many. So you think seeds many is the way, the truth, and the life. No, but he said unto seed, that one seed is Christ according to the scripture. You brothers are removing Christ and putting yourself there as the mediator between God and the Gentiles. That, my brothers, is a dangerous doctrine that must be refuted and taught against. You are not the way, the truth, and the life. You are a sinner just like I am in need of grace of God, and a sinner can't lead nobody to the sinless one. We must go to him. Scripture is clear. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not whosoever calls on an Israelite or grabs hold to an Israelite. You've misunderstood the prophet. Jesus is the one Israelite that skirt that we've got to grab a hold to, my friend. And even now, we no longer know him after the flesh. 
right? But after the spirit, Connor, Chris read that scripture that talks about, and, and uh, Mike, that it's not God gave the spirit to those who believe, not by seed, not by blood. You guys are, are focused so much on your ethnicity. It has become your Christmas tree. You, y'all criticizing a tree that we don't worship when people are worshiping themselves. We are the way, the truth, and the life. Now, that's hair. Now, if I told you the tree was the way, the truth, and the life, then you would, listen, please call me a heretic. That would be false doctrine. But I'm not saying, that tree means nothing. But you are saying you are the way to God. That is dangerous. And anybody that embraces that teaching should repent because Jesus is the only way. If man could have been the way, Jesus Christ would not have had to come. He would have just used Abraham. He would have just used Isaac or Jacob. He would have used David. He would have used Enoch. He would have used one of them. Which gate is Enoch going through? He was not of any of the 12 tribes of Israel. Which gate is Abraham going through? He was not under any of the tribes of, 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 of Israel. So please, you all you don't understand symbolic language apocalyptic literature people they Amen. again you're running with an ethnic narrative that is not bible listen trust in christ don't trust in you you remember when jesus said to the pharisees they said we be abraham's seed and we've never been in bondage to any man they they took pride in being of abraham's seed you know what jesus told them he said no you're not he said, you are of your father, the devil. Why? Because you seek to kill me. What? You're trying to replace me. You think you're righteous because of who you are and you have not fully embraced me. Listen, anybody out there under the sound of my voice, if you think that you've got to step on God because of whatever blood is running through your veins, you are sadly mistaken. And you should renounce that as Paul did when he said, I count all things but loss that I might gain Christ. Renounce that thinking. Yeah, if you're an Israelite, be an Israelite. But be an Israelite that trust in Christ. Gentiles, trust in Christ. It is God. It's in him we live, move, and have our being. It's not in Israel that we live, move, and have our being. Brothers, this is a dangerous doctrine. Dangerous General. doctrine that must be rejected at all costs, which hold is on, hold on, hold on, apologetics. Hold, because, because, hold, on, brother, hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Brother, hold on. Hold on. Do that, don't brother, go hold, go on. hold on, hold on, brother, hold on. I'm not holding on. Well, I thought you, you had the spirit. The spirit is subject to the prophet. It's my turn. The spirit is subject to the prophet. It is my turn. The spirit is subject to the prophet. Gentlemen, sorry. We, we can't hear you guys when you're arguing back and forth like this. I gave Tyrone time. Then I gave Mike time. But nobody could hear anything. It's just mumble. In the years, it's just mumble. And I'm sure in, out there on YouTube, it's just mumbled. So how many callers do we have online? How many callers? Well, we want to we cut this at 11 o'clock. And we got two callers. And Tyrone and Alvin Mike is, is on fire. So what do I do here? What do I do, guys? Wait a second. Listen. <laughs> hey, hello, Mike. Extremely long time, and I did not Talk cut him off. Oh, no, no, no. I did not I, cut him off. You guys still arguing? <laughs> we had you guys on mute. I did not cut Tyrone off. Tyrone. Yeah, but you said. Yeah, but Tyrone, you're, you're gonna watch your hold thing, your I'm spirit, you brother. Speed, hold. You too. Don't worry, so man. we're cu we're cutting we're cutting this at eleven o'clock. We're cutting this at eleven o'clock. So this is what I'm gonna do, Tyrone. I'm gonna give you one minute. Then the rest of it, Elder Mike is going to close off the show. Is that fair, Elder, uh, uh, Mike? Can I hear Elder Mike? Unmute him. That's fine. That's fine. Tyrone. Yeah. Yeah, you got uh, 60 seconds, and I'm starting it now. Basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this because it's a futile conversation I'm having here. It, does, it says in John, 7, John 17, where he said, he said, I pray not I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Right? He and you can read the whole scripture. I'm not gonna go into it with this guy. The fact of the matter is is this. The Bible is for Israel and about Israelite and it's all to do with us. You can come and you can make up the stories and sell a nice story of emotion to other people because that's what the gospel, the Christianity gospels do. We speak the truth and the truth hurts and you don't like it. The fact remains is solid. Jesus, the Christ, came unto his own. 
He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's it. And whether they are good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, he came for his own to teach them the better way. Even so, even though he said there will be a remnant, a small amount that will serve him because of the disobedience of our fathers, even the Muslims know who God's chosen people are. Go and read the book of Surah. You need to do that too, because it clearly expresses and explains who God's chosen people are. Doesn't matter if they're good, bad, and ugly. He's the judge of that. It's not been given to you. No promises have been given to you. No giving of the law has been given to you. So please, in closing, what I'm going to say, continue to be uncircumcised, continue to eat unclean food, and continue to, to preach your gospel of doctrines of devil to your people. That's wonderful. You just validate that the Israelites are a very small remnant as said by God himself. So that, that, that's me done. It's pertinent speaking to this guy. We're going around in circles. Israel is the way that if you don't go through an Israelite, good luck on your journey. That's going to be for him to decide. But as being said, that you're a stubborn and a stiff-necked generation of children. That is who the God of Israel called you, and that's how you're going to be for the rest of your life and your days. I'm done, unapologetic, Mike. Unapologetic, uh, Rob. I'm done. Okay, Tyrone. Thank you, Thank you, sir, for calling. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to finish Mike, here. Yeah, no, man, you could, you could finish it. Mike, I knew it was going to go this route, man. We oh, Our yeah. topic was Christmas, and it went know, somewhere it's else. It's all good. It's all good. It went somewhere else. So if you could like just bring it back to the main topic, if you want to, you know. Yeah, cut, I'll do that. Yeah, just bring it back to the main topic. Go ahead, I'm, sir. Floor is yours. I'm just going to hit a point real quick here. Just yeah, He's quoting out of emotion. He's emotional, but I'm biblical. Galatians chapter number, I mean, Ephesians 3, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of the same promise. He said, continue to be uncircumcised. Galatians chapter number five, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. His brother is trusting in his flesh. He's trusting in himself. He's exalting himself to the place of Christ. He says he is the way. The truth and the life. Israel is the way that that I would never put myself in the place of Jesus Christ. He is the way. He's the only way. Not not Israel. Not anyone else. And 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 because he's the way, he's given us liberty. Yes, the law came to Israel by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And this grace and truth, according to Acts chapter ten, and we read it clearly, tells us that God is no respect of persons, but in every nation. Anyone who fears God and works righteousness is accepted with him. We have liberty in Christ. And let me just read here real quick in Galatians chapter number two, just bringing it back to the subject, right? When Paul is giving his testimony here, he says, after 14 years, I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles but privately to those who were of reputation, lest I might run or had run in vain. Watch verse three. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Notice, Titus, Greek, he was not compelled to be circumcised. Now, according to Tyrone, this brother is going, he's not going to heaven, he's going to be uncircumcised, he's not going to make it, he didn't become an Israelite. But let's watch what Paul called these people in verse four. He says, and this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. You who? You Gentiles. You do not have to become a Gen an Israelite to obtain salvation. You can hold on to your ethnicity, but put your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't allow false brethren to bring you into bondage. They want to say you're not a Christian or you're not a, a, a believer or you are a, a devil because of a decoration. A decoration makes you a devil, but you can say you are the way, the truth, and the light. <laughs> and Jesus was simply saying, I am the way because he was an Israelite, not because he was the spotless lamb of God. John said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, not Israel. 
Israel needed help, which is why they are in blindness until this day, because they trust in themselves and not in the work of Jesus Christ. Christmas, my brothers and sisters, listen, is not a mandate. Anybody who celebrates it as a festive day, not worshiping any tree, any emblem, any crazy Santa Claus, none of that. But we honor the Lord Jesus Christ and that the incarnation, God became man in the person of Jesus Christ. And John said, we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. If you trust in Jesus Christ, you cannot be condemned by not keeping the mosaic customs. You can keep them as a cultural practice, but when you make them a command, you have violated the scriptures. I appreciate you, uh, Unapologetic Rob. Thank you for the platform. And again, I'm Elder Mike Holloway, and uh, my YouTube channel is Elder Mike, Your Urban Church. We teach against false doctrine every day, all day, in a sense. So we thank you again for the opportunity. I appreciate all those that hung in there with us. God bless you all, and we love you. Mike, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. This went over longer than I expected. It took a different route, but it was it was a fun ride. It was fun yeah. hearing you. It was fun hearing the our callers. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. We got to do this again. Yes, sir. Until next time, yes. you have a great day and a blessed day, sir. God bless you. You too, sir. Yes, take care. Thank you very much, sir. Elder Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Elder Mike. Man, what to do, what to do. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I opened up saying that as a child, I, I loved Christmas. I think as children, we all loved Christmas. Then I got to a certain age that I became an adult. I did my own research. Um... And what I found, I wasn't too happy about. Me, my personal opinion. You want to keep Christmas? Hey, that's your life. That is your soul. You're responsible for your own soul. But for me, I, 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 can't, I can't fathom that there's too much coincidence. That this day is around the same time as the solstice, the Yule, the 12 days that the Romans used to keep, the tree. And if you really read Jeremiah 10, it is the axemen that chopped the tree down. Then the tree was brought down, brought into the house. Nails and hammers were used to stand it up. Then when it's standing up, it was decorated with silver and gold. It's just too much of a coincidence. I, I, so for me, I had to clear my conscience. I couldn't do it. So I stepped out of it. But that's my opinion. It's my life. I could do whatever I want with my life. You know, we have the Google. You could go on the Google, you could look up these things, and if you're still happy keeping Christmas, good for you. But at least we're in an age of information that you could check out stuff. There's books, scriptures. You don't have to leave your house. I remember 30 years ago, I used to spend so much time in the library. There was no internet back then. This is, uh, it, this is not easy. I, and you know why? Because it's tradition. It's hard to break tradition. It's hard to break something that there's so much fond memories. A song is played. Jingle bells. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That triggers off memories. It triggers off smell of food, laughter. And for one to cut that off and to say that is pagan, I don't want to do it, 
that's a hard thing to do. But for my conscience, and from what I learned, what I believe, I, I had to do it. And that was 30 years ago. And we do have Google now. I'm privy to a lot of information, more than I was back then. And no matter what I read, research, hear, I did the right decision for me. Nothing, nothing has proved me wrong where I said, damn, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have stopped Christmas. It wasn't pagan. Nope. Nope. 30 years later, Christmas, for me, is 100% pagan. You could dance around the scriptures, but history tells you where it comes from. So you really have to decide what's important in your life. It is your soul you're responsible for. So you make the right decision for yourself. I can't live your life. Only you can. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, December 15, we have Bible Big Mouth. His show is, is the story of Jesus fake news? You know, I asked him about that, that, uh, that uh, title. What, what do you mean fake news? What are you talking about? Did Jesus exist? Is he real? Is he a fairy tale? Is he Horus reincarnated? Was Jesus stolen from the story of Horus? Well, he has two guests with him. And they're going to go head to head. Is Jesus fake news? Next week, December 15th. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Share, like. Uh, we have, uh, what is it again? Cash. What is it called? Cash what? I have it here somewhere. This is new. Cash app. We have PayPal. If you feel like donating, go ahead. But thank you for watching. I know it's been a long day, but I thank you very much. Until next time, I bid everybody peace. Thank you.